Welcome to the Austin All Day Podcast. Thank you for tuning into Austin's Culinary Frequency. Joining us today is Chef Paul Patrizzi of Spanish Oaks, his daughter Mia, and his lead line cook, Ace in the Hole, Chef Matthew. You guys follow the podcast on Instagram and support the podcast on Patreon. Sit back, grab a drink, and check it out. We are here with, wow, quite the lineup here. Chef, Chef Paul and his daughter. Mia. Mia. Mm-hmm. And Chef Matt. You guys are from Spanish Oaks. Yes, yeah. we are. And you're you're a host hostess where? At Spanish Oaks with him. At Spanish Oaks? Yeah. yeah. She's got the, the whole crew here. She joined the team. Very excited to have her on board. Yeah, it's cool. And how long have you been over there? Um, three months, I think, so far. Okay. And how's you, how do you like working with your pops? <laughs> he bothers me a lot. Do you do? <laughs> yeah. Well, I could see her from where I, uh, from the wheelhouse, so I'm like, I can just keep a good eye on her. But oh, I'm yeah. very proud of her. She works hard, yeah. on time every day. Absolutely, takes it seriously. So, very proud of her. That's great. That's great. And Chef Matt, lead, lead line cook there. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Do whatever. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. How long have you been over at Spanish Oaks? What, about three and a half. Almost four. Yeah, almost four years. Now he's been with us. You guys have a, a solid crew over there. We do. Not a big turn. You know, a couple slots will turn here and there, but for the most part, most of us have been together. Matty, our exec chef, Matt, has been there now 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going on six, except for my time in the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, Lance has been with us four. So I've averaged about, about five years for our team members. Nice. Um you guys might be the first, like, you know, because we can't just go eat at Spanish Oaks, the average person. Right. You have to be a member of the club, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting, you know, thing to touch on. But that club is a very popular club, right? Yes. We've been growing. Our membership is growing. And um, we're fortunate because a lot of clubs get bad names. Oh, club food. It, it, you know, if you're in a club corp, it's, it's, it's more, you know, the dollars. We're very fortunate. They they back our culinary program we're free to do what we want to do and and our members appreciate and we appreciate the chance to just get to cook what we want to cook and say hey what are we doing this week sure and you guys are cooking all hours of the day but another thing that may be a sort of a first is you guys more fine dining right yes so that's something we don't see a lot of in austin and we've talked about this on the podcast but yep. you do if you're a member of a private club yes <laughs> So are people actually getting dressed up, like fine dining style for that, or is yep. it more casual? Um, it depends on nights. Friday night's our family night where we have uh, – there's sitters that come in, yeah. and, and the members get to drop their kids with the sitters, and they go have a nice meal, and, could, and the kids are – they have their own buffet and take care of their things, and the, all the members get together and have a really good time. Thursday and Saturday are more our, our really pressed down fine dinner night where everybody's kind of chill and just enjoying the food and the drinks. and Nice. And the menu, you guys kind of keep it the same for those nights too? Yeah, we change, uh, we do seasonally. And uh, right now, getting ready to switch out again. But um, we do features every week. We'll do a bunch of features, kind of keep a a chop house style menu. That's always your favorite go to's. And then we just, the features where we like to shine and can really go forward and have a good time with it. And we got, Chef Matt here, do you get to like in, like put your two cents in ever? They give me a lot of freedom. They give me a lot of freedom to do, That's good. Uh, to create. Um, they'll ask me various questions about certain things, what I think about it. Um, but as far as it, it, things that go into dishes, they'll let me come up with my own or they'll say, hey, what do you think about this dish? And I'm like, well, can I try this? And they're like, absolutely. You know? oh, yeah. it's like, so they, they give me a lot of freedom. Nice. Absolutely. absolutely. And the end result is something great, right? When you... Get yeah, more, they tr- they, more minds contributing. They're very confident, confident in, uh, in me. They, 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 uh, and I appreciate that. So I know if they ask me to do something, they know I'm, nine times out of ten I don't let them down. So. <laughs> um, there's always that one time, though. Nobody's perfect. No, um, but you've got, Chef Paul, 30 years cooking experience, 30-plus years? Yeah, just about. How long yep. have you been cooking for? Getting up there. Started out when I was about, uh, well, I wouldn't count when I was uh a kid working with family and helping out with my father who did, um, he had a food truck 
Oh, yeah. Which, not a big deal by modern standards, but we're talking this is the mid-80s, so it was kind of a big deal, especially being Jackson, Mississippi, where I'm from. Okay, definitely. But that was minimal. Uh, was, what, was he, what was the food truck? So originally, it was, that was actually kind of cool. It was a uh, uh, mini donuts. Okay. So <laughs> it had, a, it was cool. It had a plexiglass window. And uh, where you could see, you could see everything, right? So you see, you see the donuts drop out, and it had perforated arms. You know where it goes down, takes three times, and then it comes out into a pool. And we had these wooden sticks, very similar to chopsticks, and take them out, set them so they drain from the grease drains right from the donuts. Sure. And then we did uh, one. You only had two choices. One was powdered sugar, and then one was cinnamon sugar. And I was a little kid. I'd shake them up to you and hand them to you like that. Well, that's and, I'd, I'd include that. That's getting started young. So that's oh, getting yeah. started young. And yeah. then when I got older, um, when I started getting into music when I was a teenager, yeah. um, of course I wanted a really nice guitar, you know, like we all do. Uh -huh. And, you know, by that time I had a, uh, s my parents had separated, so I had a single mother, and my mom was like, if you want it, you know, you're going to have to go get it, yeah. you know. So me and my brother landscaped. Wise, and, wise mom there. Absolutely. So, when I, so from landscaping, I got the guitar. But I also worked with some friends at a restaurant because my it was my friends, you know, I went to high school with, and we had a, we had a blast, we had the best time, you know, um, and that's kind of started it. And then so from there on, I could I, I knew I could withstand the heat in the kitchen as opposed to Mississippi heat because it's very very it's as hot as here, but it's humid. So yeah. I guess it would be well if you've been to Louisiana, then you know all, yeah. you know all about that. Oh that's, yeah, so Nasty. yeah, it's a swamp. So I, exactly, yeah, that's right. exactly. So I started. <laughs> so then I started. Um, and then after I graduated high school, I, um, I, you know, I didn't really know, like a lot of people, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I knew I was getting good at that and that, and I enjoyed it. So it was probably from at the, the music, music, well then into the food. Oh, okay. musical will always play the rest of my life. Sure. Always for sure. Hand down. But I knew I needed something cause I was always taught to have a, a B and a C plan. Okay. You know, have something. Do you still have an A, B and a C plan or you roll uh, well, I, I'm successful in the restaurant business. I'm, you know, playing music, which I love, and I'm able to play with people and go play shows. So that's, I mean, I might not be a superstar or anything like that, but yeah, I enjoy it and it's fun. As long as you're happy, right? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, so then, so that was probably make it to the 90s, uh, then 2000, and then I started, I got my first job with a real chef. And probably 98 or 99, and I still worked under his wing for up until 2004. That was in Louisiana or Texas? This was in Mississippi. Okay. All this is back in Mississippi. Okay. Um, I've only been actually here for about five and a half years. All right. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you started cooking for real Did you say you always kind of knew you, you would, that would be what you were doing? Yeah. Because, I mean, I, was, I, I enjoyed it. Well, and also, I know it doesn't really look like it, but I enjoy to eat a lot. He knows I eat, I eat more than anything. Oh, like, I don't know how he stands. He's got a, he a speedy eats. metabolism. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. You want to see what he knocks down for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you stand and keep cooking? I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. yeah, yeah. I eat, so I eat. And, um, and, that was, and, and also, so I could make money, I like to eat, and then I would work at restaurants the cuisine, the cuisine, so I, I could learn how to make it. Okay, and, that, and that's yeah. where it evolved. And then eventually, um, probably about fifteen years in after that, I decided to go to culinary school, and then which I really enjoyed because I had been working in the restaurant business already, and that way, uh, a lot of the cuisines that we did in school, I was able to. I already, I already know how to do it. So I got to help yeah. teach in some of my labs, yeah, which yeah. I thought was really amazing. And I oh, really cool. I really enjoyed that a lot. And so Where I, was the culinary school? It was in Mississippi. And what was the name of it? It was a community college. Okay. But the cool thing about it was is all our all our books were CIA books. So I got we got the best the best we could get unfortunately, unfortunately for there. And Chef Paul CIA, right? Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Ninety nine. That, that's that's 99. where I wanted to go. That's where I wanted to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it, but you you you're happy with it. You weren't you were not oh, stuck with a, absolutely. A, a debt. Abs absolutely, yeah. Well, and two, you know, it was like, um, it was I could afford it. I mean, I was able to pay for it out of my own pocket, you know. And the and there was a qual it was quality. I mean, and it's and it's like like well, like Chef Paul sells me all the time. It's what it's what, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it, you know. And so we had we had the, a small facility, but it was a good facility. We had a good kitchen, and we had the quality books. And I still have my books. Like yeah. Some people, you know, they get rid of them. I'm, like, ah, I'm keeping them. Yeah, I'm yeah. keeping my books. Useful you know, so absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. Right. Yeah. So Mia, it's kind of similar. You know, you you've had a, your father's a chef. 
Mm-hmm. You know, your father, I don't know if you referred to, you said you've worked for your first real uh, chef. He, we'll bleep that out for your dad. He, he was, said, <laughs> nah, my, my, dad, my, my dad wouldn't even think about trying to get in the kitchen with me nowadays. He wouldn't know. Uh, now, my mom, on the other hand, is probably one of the best I've ever seen on a grill. Okay. On actual, like a, like give her a little, like a little Weber or something like that. Oh, she'll, oh, she'll oh, tear it up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nice, nice. Oh, yeah. Now, have you gotten into cooking at all? And I know you're hosting over at mm-hmm. Spanish Oaks. Well, he has taught me a lot of, like, Italian homemade dishes. Like, I'm really good at making pasta. I can definitely say that. Scratch. Scratch yeah, pasta, from scratch. Yeah? That's, that's a valuable thing to know. <laughs> yeah, and I've, just from, like, watching him, like, over, the, over, like, the years, like, the kitchen. So I've learned, like, a lot just from watching. But, like, cooking's, like, cool, but, like, seeing it now, I don't think I'd want to, like, work in it because it's just, it's a lot. And how do you feel, Chef Paul? What about her her saying that? Um, you happy to hear that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think most chefs are. It's a uh, it's a grind. It's wise, a grind. Wise decision. Wise decision. But it's yeah. a good grind. I think you're either born. It's something. Yeah. A lot of us are born into when you start it. I mean, I've been in the business a while now. So for me, it just came. I started when I was 15. I, I knew I was wanted to go to CIA when I was 12. We took a wine tour. Wow, that's young. Yeah, we went in a bus. My parents. There was some wine, up some winery up in upstate New York. I couldn't even tell you the name of it right now. But they, uh, we went and we. One of the stops was at the school, and okay. I went, we, we were touring it, and all these guys and these tall hats and this clanking going on in all these kitchens, and it was smaller than it wasn't as big as it was now. Drew you in though. Drew me in. I know. I took the original application home. That's it. I'm going there. When you were 12? When I was 12. I oh, my gosh. I took the application yeah. thing home, and I kept it there. And I said, I kept looking at it. That's cool. That's pretty yeah. awesome. It yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> now, it took me four times to get in. That's okay. They you turned got... me down three out of four, but I... But you didn't stop. You I kept didn't fighting. Stop. That's awesome. No, I kept going. And, and so, like you, you were cooking, and you were able... I mean, you didn't have... Um, what, are, what are these called when you're trying to get into the CIA? Like requirements? And, uh, yeah. They're different, yeah. You had so, a bunch of... Uh, uh, experience under your belt. Now, right. when did you get into, uh, or well, like, I guess cooking? I, guess it said, I was going to say CIA, but you needed the requirements. Need the requirements. I started out washing dishes, kind of like everybody else. You know, I started, if you back it up, I started with my uh, my mom and my grandmother. We every Most Italian kitchens back east, I grew up in a small town in Connecticut, had secondary kitchens where everybody were everybody we did our own we had two acres of gardens we had three acres we had cows and pigs and apples and pears at home wow that's we made our own wine i was my first thing with wine was walking around the press you know, walk around as a kid pressing the wine down when you're about you know when you can so stand your up tall. family makes wine we'd make wine for the house for other families we'd bottle it we one two barrels would go to wine one would go for vinegar Wow, and yeah. so you know all about like when the harvest comes, it comes, and it's yeah. happening, and yeah, it was, and that's tough work, right? You don't think much about it at the time. It's just how you grew up, you know. Now you hear farm to table, and it's like, well, we've been, you yeah. know, yeah. this was part of it. And that's what's kind of sad because years ago it was just how we grew up. It wasn't, it wasn't such a big, yeah. you know, statement to be made. Sure, now it's almost trendy. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or yeah, so yeah, but you know, it can be a little. <laughs> Pull on the, the heartstrings a little, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We uh, we used to a couple times had a few tomato fights in the in the cellar with the ripe <laughs> tomatoes, and my ass got chapped pretty good after you know my parents come. That's food you're throwing around. Yeah. Around, around. What are you yeah. doing? Didn't know any better at that point in my right. life. But that right. was well, you got learned quick. Quite the palate there, then growing up with food like that. What uh, what's the tip for tomatoes with the birds? Are are the birds bad? Where you grew up? No, not too bad. A lot of, here, the, they're, they're, they're here. Vicious. I don't do much growing. We do a lot of the bigger fields. Friends that I knew had farms and for corn with the crow and the birds in there was uh, cherry bombs on a long stick. On a long stick, and as the, the wick burned up, boom, boom, it would blow off at different uh-huh. times, and it would kind of keep everything kind of moving around. That's an interesting approach. Yeah, that was <laughs> that, that scare them, right? Yeah, that's what that's what I remember with that. Ours, we didn't have too many problems with any of the birds or anything. Sure, fortunately. Oh wow! What an interesting start. So, what uh, you you got an application at twelve years old? Yep. You want to go to the CIA? Yes. You're going to get denied four times. What have what leading up? How did that happen? <laughs> well, I was a horrible student, as a lot of us were. I and guess just that, general that kind of generally went to general education. Yeah. Um, Don't blame you. No, I just was horrible. Yeah. We had 130 in our graduating class. I think it was. 
probably one twenty four oh, wow. or something like that. But I just I Connecticut Connecticut okay small high school in Connecticut is four hundred I think in the whole school. I mean Mia's school has yeah, forty five hundred I think yeah. in her school. So, but yeah, it was small school. Just um, always had trouble with just sitting still. And come to find, I suffer from dyslexia. So okay. we, at the time, now it's more prevalent where people are more testing and things are going on. I was tested, but it wasn't really something that brought up. There wasn't a way to handle it. So it was kind of at the time where they push, they push you through the system. Yeah. Okay, you're that's the song because you're always getting in trouble because you can't focus, you can't read, it, mm-hmm. you can't sit still. I mean, from so f- when I think dyslexic, I think like you're mixing up numbers, numbers, numbers. That, letters, letters, yeah. letters, and numbers. They go backwards. Yeah. And you also a symptom of it is just kind of being is irritable the word or just yeah kinda... well you get I think it's frustrated you end up just getting where you give up and it's sometimes you're just like I can't get you'll be sitting in class they'll write all these numbers and you're like I have no idea what you're talking about sure that's rough. nothing that's right so but you work with something now that's an art that you you, you need numbers to you need to crunch numbers, numbers for a menu you know? I need numbers and you know my first interview I, I started as a dishwasher. In a small in a small restaurant called Charcoal Chef, that's still around after all these years, known for its steaks and its drinks. That's cool. awesome. the town. Right all before. these years. Then uh, I got a girlfriend that goes, "Hey, I know the chef over at the the hotel. They're looking for a dishwasher." I'm like, "Okay, yeah. let's go do that." So over I went, and that that hooked me. It was in the day of all the the waiters that have been there for years with the tails and. You know, and all high, all big buffets, and it was it was big uh, an awakening. It just I, I loved I loved all the action. It all made sense to me when like I got the, in there. Like the mania of it. Yeah, made sense to me. Nice, cool. Um, so how when did you? So ninety nine. Yeah. How long were you cooking before you got into the CIA? Um, almost twelve, fourteen years somewhere in there. I'm curious why you got denied four times. Can you? My I couldn't. <laughs> the simple math. My uh, grades weren't good enough. So it was still the, the dyslexia. The simple math. Okay. And then I'm like, bullshit. I, I went and, I, and English and math, you had to have at least, I think it was a C at the time, C average in a, on a 101 college class. If you can get a C average in that, they uh, consider your admissions and look at it. Sure. So I finally pa- I passed the English. I took it one at a time and I kept working. Passed the English, got to be in that. Got into the math. Actually, it clicked. I had a really good teacher, God bless her, and I learned how to. I learned algebra. I was like, oh, and once that and that and I got an A in a class. I never forget how proud I felt. I said, all right, I got a freaking A. I'm ready. I submitted my application again. We go up. Okay, everything's great. The administration looks at me and goes, admissions lady's like, well, you sure you want to? You know, you have the experience, but you sure you want to come in? You know, it's a lot of money. I'm like. Yeah, I want to come in. Don't worry, it's my money. We'll figure it out. And I, I graduated at the top end of my class. And excellent. It, with thinking of her in that scenario, did she know that you picked up an application when you were twelve? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do I want to come in? I've been thinking come. about. It. Yeah, I was thinking about my whole life. <laughs> you know what? It's like Rudy, the movie Rudy. Man, yeah. I kept getting that freaking denial, denial, yeah. denial, and I still hang my applica- the acceptance letter. I still hang up on my wall to look every time. So you can do what you need to do. You just yeah. gotta. It takes a little patience. I've always been a little. Take me a little longer to get somewhere where I wanted to get. But if I was determined enough, I always seemed to get there. Well, I'm sure that kind of rubs off in the kitchen a little bit. I mean, absolutely. I mean, that's a it's a pretty good trait to have to kind of like push through, you know, yeah, the hard times. What um, what do you think having a, a chef as a father like in general? Like when you were growing up, holidays was he home or like working hours? Where maybe what, what do you think about that? What can you say as a daughter of a chef? Well, it's really cool, but it's definitely like different than like. A lot of kids at, in general, like, he works really late hours. So I was really used to, like, knowing, like, his schedule and knowing when he was going to come home, like, late and stuff like that. But on holidays, he was usually home, and we'd have these massive feasts for, like, three people. <laughs> like, like a huge prime rib and, like, everything on, like, Christmas. Nice. And it was... And it was always really cool. And I think that having a dad as, like, a father, you appreciate food a lot. And, like, I think it, I've grown to, like, love to, like, eat it and just, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's good, though. It's, I, I can tell you're a good dad. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't be working with him if you weren't. Yeah. yeah. 
But you you got to consider that. He can give you a hard time whenever he wants. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Like, if I have, like, a fight with him or something, That's I have to I, still show yeah, up. and. You, gotta get, get. you can't yeah. talk to me that way because I'm your superior. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, he's That's got, not yeah. fair. Go, there you go. Yeah, he can get me fired if he wanted to, but he's, he's got you now. Yeah. So, and you, what when I, you know, when I say that, does Chef Paul's like demeanor in the kitchen and the things he does? I'm sure it's got to rub off the kind of like persistence that he's we get. Got. A, we get along very well because he, because I grew up with a lot of the old school chefs that don't exist anymore, and he has that same mentality. The and pot I, throwing chefs. Well. Not necessarily pot throw, and maybe throw you in a pot, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, that, uh, that's you know I worked with a few like that, and I've you know everybody has their their moments, but I feel like you know what you're getting into. You're you're in there, you're busy, you've got you've got to get this out, and you're like we have times all all the time, and Polly will be like, Maddie, we got to get this out, man. I was like, all right, I'll give it to you. I'll give me two minutes. I got you. You know, I got you. You know, and I, and we'll make it happen. You know, and, sure. and if we do, we make it happen. So I mean, like. We get along well because we have that similar mentality, and and he and and, and he, like I said, he know he knows that if he needs something, I got him. And I and if I'm and if I'm I'm kind of kind of slow on something, I'll be like, give me a few minutes, and he can kind of stall it out and and, and 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 pace it out. So all right, they can hit maybe some apps or whatever the next thing to give me time to give it that. So everything might just seem like it just flows right in, you know. Sure. So good, good working relationship. Ab- yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. How's the the whole like crew over there in general? Do you guys have? I mean, you've been there three and a half years. Like, do most guys stick around, or you kind of get those the rotating doors? Some in some cases. I think the younger kids, some of the younger ones, depending what they're getting into, they we're not. I mean, you've been in our kitchen. We're not an intense kitchen, but we're an intense kitchen as individuals as we want to. We all march the same way. One of the questions, if you were to come in for a job, would be, you know, there's no recipe book. If you make a great coleslaw or you make a great potato, so just pick something. You don't need to come to me. I'll taste your food. Okay. But I want to see that passion come out. That That's what, and I mean, what disappoints me is when you see somebody with so much talent and they're not using it and they're just being like, it's like, man, get over that for one second. Look at yourself. You've got so much talent. You just got to, we're all young. We're, we get, you know, we got our balls. We're going to do, we're going to do, which is great. You got to keep that, but you got to just steer them in that direction to go. And we have a lot of those guys. Mm-hmm. And those are the ones I go, to me, if, when I came up in the kitchens, it was in the rougher era of, of the times. I mean, yeah. the throwing chefs, the screaming, which, yeah. but I learned a, a ton from it. But I just want them to try. As long as they're trying I'm happy for them when they when they don't want to try. It's it's it's. Can I um, backtrack to when you just you you you've lived it? I oh, lived it. You've lived it, and you've seen kind of the progression out of. Um, and what I'm talking about is you know just chefs who are swearing and cursing and maybe yeah. throwing things or getting angry and you know belittling you. But there's this underlying purpose behind that. It's yeah. to toughen you up and you Absol- know. Yep. Callous Absolutely. you, I guess, Absolutely. in a good way, you know, yeah. to have a yeah. thick skin. Absolutely. So what, uh, I mean, Chef Paul's not doing that, you know, at uh, Spanish Oaks, unless unless he is. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. no he- but w- seeing this or going through that uh, change, what do you, what do you, uh, what are some things that you can remember or, you know? Oh, I've had been, I've been through every, like I've heard some of the other guys on, on, the cast talk about the, the screaming, the belittling, the yelling. But after all that, that moment of when they touch you on your shoulder and said, that's great. Yeah. And that's what you work for. You work for that inst- that one bit of gratification going, I did it right. Right. And the more of those you get, you start building and you start becoming stronger. The business isn't going to change. It's like the fashion industry to me. Everything comes around in cycles. It's very cyclical. And it's going to, I hope it gets softer. Right. And that's the big problem we that we're all looking at now how are we going to get more of a life but still keep the high quality standards yeah and you know the customer only knows what's put in front of them they don't i don't think there's much interested you know the foodies maybe but there's so many moving parts that right. go on and back and we all know that they don't they don't realize they just want the best product at the end they don't care how it gets there right you sit down you want the best meal you read it sounds great give it to me how it gets there right mm, 
Yeah, no, and, I, I get you. And it's a lot of focus to get a lot of, you know, when you want to work on the higher end of it. And, you know. Yeah, and I've I've kind of like brought up the point that you guys you guys are dedicating yourselves, your the, yeah. the hours that you're putting in. And I say kind of as we steer away from that, that's the, the big wall that we run yeah. into is like, okay, well, if it turns into nine to five with paid vacations right. and weekends off and, you know, lunch breaks, then where's the, you know, the passion disappears. That's that's the balance. That's up to the new generation. Yeah. I'm going to see how that's going to, how it's going to unfold, how the customer, you know, will it, it's even in national, you talk to, you listen to David Chang and them and they're having the same conversations. How are we going to, you know, Joe Beef up in Canada, how do we you know, run a kinder establishment for our employees, but still put out the same output. Okay. It does. So it's, it's, it's everywhere. Everybody's trying to figure out what the next, the next phase is going to be. Right. Yeah. And yes, obviously we want to treat people humanely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess there, there would be that niche where you have to figure out how to like really put somebody under pressure so that when they do, do something right, that they also get that little instant or bit of gratification that means something. Right. So, how are you doing with that? I mean, I, I, you, you come across as a chef who's never thrown pots. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> <laughs> it depends what day you catch. Not anymore. Yeah. Am I? In the pot throwing days of that, it was. I wouldn't say pot throwing, but it was more of a the, earning the respect of your crews. I, I, most of my first jobs were on in the Northeast, and it, you know, it's a, little, it was a, a great market to work. I've worked from truck stops to three star. Restaurants, time, New York Times restaurants, not Michelin. Right. But, uh, and I've, you know, I, I, I've got to see a big aspect. I have as much respect for the guy that flips eggs every morning as, as the guy that's putting out a four star dish. It's just, it's just where the passion is. Definitely. You're going to any Michelin stars, most of the guy, you got to look. The guys that are doing the work are guys that came up this way. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> they, they learn a certain way, and they know just what you need, and those are the guys that take care of you when you get up in the high end. Of, like, these guys know what we're thinking. Right. And when they say, we need this, this, and that, and you can walk away. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. they don't need to be hands-on or almost sometimes, like, would you back off? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting into shit, aren't I? I'll just right. walk away now. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's been referred to on here, and you could relate, to almost like kitchens, like moving like a band almost. You know yeah, absolutely, I mean? absolutely, right? absolutely, absolutely, yeah. right on. Uh, it totally mm-hmm. is, right? It's yeah. almost like it's it, a rhythm. It's like the rhythm, like I was talk- talking about earlier, like with me and him. And if something's kind of going, and we're really busy, and we get and, and the servers drop everything at once, and so we get hit with you know nine tops, six tops, whatever, all back to back to back. So then he's like, okay, well we'll put this one here, we'll put this one here. We got three of the same things here, here, here. Right. Kind of like orchestrating it, yeah. and then we'll just start. We'll just get the rhythm, and we'll just we'll roll with it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Because you want the, the, you know, however many all day, right? Yeah. All day. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And it is like music. Bands go out and have great shows, and you know when you're twanging, the, the audience might not know. There was, but you know. You yeah. know, and you're you going, know. man. And you can have 100 compliments, but that one dish that somebody didn't like, you go, oh, no, man, fuck, what? Yeah. What do we do different? What do I do right. wrong? That stuff you kind of try to get out of your head as you get older. If you guys are all into it and like everything's working properly, can you kind of tell if maybe something's something's not the way it should be and kind of foresee it? Like maybe like a feeling? Well, I think so for for some of us, yes. It it might be sometimes like one person might be just getting like their station beat up. Okay. You know, and They're then in the weeds. It, and something. then we're exactly in the weeds. Right. And so somebody else might give them a hand. Or, you know, all of us give them a hand or we'll work around them and say, okay, you just focus getting that out. And then if we can get this this other stuff out and kind of move around you. But you generally, someone will, will help. That's one of the great things about us is like if, they, if we see somebody's getting beat up, somebody else will say, okay, my station's not getting beat up. I'm going to come help you and we'll get this moved out. We'll get this stuff rolled. That's, you know? that's what it's all about, right? I mean, it's you could call it teamwork. You can call it whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you got the, a band, a kitchen, whatever yeah. whatever you guys are, you, yeah. you're looking to put something out on you know, for somebody, and when you get that one person who who's not happy, what what do you do? What uh, I mean, obviously you make it right. Yeah, you make it right, but you still don't feel right. Yeah. It's like you feel let down inside. What did you know? I'm working the wheel. Didn't I see that steak? Did I check the temperature right? Yeah, did I right. miss it there? Because right. ultimately, it falls on Matt, my executive chef, and myself. Not these guys. Something goes wrong. It's it's not them. It's it starts with us. Yeah. You know. 
so Chef Matt couldn't join us this yes. evening. Chef, uh, n- not uh, the executive chef. Yes. And but ten years he's been here. Yes. Um, that's not always. No, I guess it's it is easy to do it at uh, a place of this uh, caliber if you're the right person. Because if you're not the right person and the members don't like you, they will let you know and you will be out the door. Absolutely. And it can be a really good spot to be, but that's part of it. And just like you're saying, it falls on. It's a it's a heavy way to. to it's bear. a heavy way, and uh, he he did. Matt's been wonderful. He uh, he came up from a line cook up there running the whole plant, running the whole business at Spanish, Oaks. Sh- at Spanish Oaks. So he's he's and then the the guys like him. Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah, he's he's just like. The mellow, he takes mellow. care of things quiet, yeah, everything's does. good. I'm more the boisterous one, and he's more the mellow one. Yeah. He has all the perfect adjectives. I'm just like, uh, and it works perfect. Yeah. Uh, great, great. Absolutely. But that's um, kind of want to touch on the fact that you guys are serving members. So you have yes. repeat customers. I mean, yes. it's, you don't have the public, the general right. public. Mm-hmm. Um, so how, how does that kind of work? Because that's, like I say, you guys are the first people on here who have that kind of uh, situation. Do you have... I don't know what you got people who come in who have favorites that you know that, or do you have people that are picky or, of course. or do you guys, it does it get monotonous, like to always be serving the same people or what? Well, I mean, that's, it's their club. So, I mean, we're going to see them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then there's ones who they won't, they like certain things and that's fine. That's what we're there for. And then we have people that are actually foodies and they're like, okay, throw me something. Like we have some of our members that we, re- that, that, well, we like all of our members, but certain members are like, Hey, just Surprise me. Okay. Like the other night, they made up some dishes for some members of ours. They had some guests with them, and they were like, just surprise me. Just just make me something. Now, that kind of stuff we love. We love doing that kind of stuff. Oh, for you know? sure. Oh, yeah. We love doing that kind of stuff. Just let the creativity go. Food, Absolutely. Foodies are good people to cook for, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're all, I mean, it, it's never a dull moment. You got to – Is at any given time, we, we don't know the word no. So – if so, no matter what they need, we'll make it happen. That's it, that's also important. Not and, knowing the word no. Right? Not knowing the word no, and it's so it makes it a little different than being an a la carte restaurant where you know. And and the upside is we know our guests. We know what they like to drink. We know what their preferences are. What they don't like. What they what they what makes them comfortable. So in, in a weird way, that can make the um, dining experience like you can always like tweak it and make absolutely. it better and better and better. So these, I don't know. Should go become a member at Spanish Oaks. Yeah, man, absolutely. They, we've they've thrown some good challenges down, and we go, okay, we'll do this. And sometimes I go, wow, okay, but it's all good. It's it's fun. It's and they become part of your family. You know, I mean, you just you know everybody coming through the door. I've watched kids grow up in six years. Oh, they're off to college. They're doing this, and it's um, that's cool. That's cool. And even when our even when our crew, it's like we're a good family. I was away for a year, and and I came back, and it was, we just rolled. I was welcome with open arms, and rolled right back yeah. in, and it was. Yeah, we walked right back in, and I was like, <laughs> did because like I said, we've always got along, and I was like, well, first thing I was like, you lost some weight. And he got really, really dark. He got really, really tan. And let's then, say, and, and, he, and he, and it was just like we're back. And it's just like it was like old friends you hadn't talked yeah, to in like yeah. three years. And then you see each I, other, and it's just like you left off right where. Right, I remember. Where, you know? I was. <laughs> yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. When you came yeah. back, I was like, what yeah, man. Going on? It was, yeah. I was walking out of there. Yeah, yeah you're walking out. It's coming up. Yeah, it was but like, what? Well, you went to the Bahamas. Went to the Bahamas, which went. I just I can't not ask about. I got to yeah. We got to talk about. This. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, because. And initially, I don't know if you remember what you had said to me, but, you know, I said, oh, how was it? You know, and you say, you know, it, gets, it can get a little lonely, actually. It's a little lonely? Yes, it can. So this, like, um, what, what would you call it? You know, you're like this shiny prize in the corner. of going to go work on a beach and yep. live on an island and, yep. you know, like, whatever, whatever your thought is about that. And then you get there and, like, maybe you're like, oh, this is great, but it's starting to, you know, maybe you miss Mia or whatever it yeah, is, you yeah. know? It was tough being away from the family. Oh, um, yeah, I'm sure. You know, th- I would go down uh, three weeks on and a week off, and they'd fly anywhere you wanted to go home to. Where, if I said, hey, I'm going to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. you so you would come home every week? Uh, every three weeks. I had three weeks on, okay. one week off one week is off. what we would do. Um, that's still kind of see. It's all tempting, though. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, sounds... uh, it was great. I, it was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it. It, it was a, a Tiger Woods design course. We were selling um, property to homeowners to build the community around. It was Eleuthera is about a hundred miles long, and at its at its widest, three and a half miles. What about nine thousand people? 
and we were in southern Eleuthera, which was basically quite, I mean, you, I mean, talk about being dropped, parachuted in. I got in, they said, here's your car, drive, over, drive here, there's where you live. And it's on the left side of the road. Oh, this is cool. All right, because all the keys are left in the car. It's a white van. And I got off the plane and I'm like, shit, man, there's three white vans here. What fucking white van? Right. And this guy goes, oh, you with Jack's ba- Oh, no, it's, oh, that's yours right there. Oh, thank you. And yeah. off I would go. I got in my thing and I would, and clients would come as the clients came in, we'd cook for them. They'd you know, have two to three days, maybe four. They'd stay on the island. How was that set up? It's, it's, it's not like a hotel. It's no, um, no. like a private reserve kind it, of thing. It was a, uh, they had a couple hundred acres, and it had. Um, it was a house. It was a pink house they renovated. They called it the pink house. It was. I had a regular kitchen. I had a six burner stove. I had a refrigerator, and I had a grill outside. That was it. And the stove worked half the time. Wow. So, like we used to have to bake cookies. I'd, we had cookies, different amenities to put in the houses when they came in. That broke, and it takes three weeks to get apart. So I used to broil bake cookies. I'd put pans over the broiler. To block the direct heat coming down, and it heated up enough to cook the cookies, oh you know, that goodness. kind of stuff. Whatever. You learn to work, and you could be on an island and be out of fish. There's what? Depending how they're, you know, what the weather's doing, and if the guys are going out, you can get, you go to restaurants in the south, and they'll be like, well, groupers on half the menu, I went on half the menu. Why? Well, the fishermen didn't go out. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, you go sit and have lunch. Lunch is an hour and a half, man, doing nothing. And then you just said, oh, they're like, okay, cool. Okay, it's all is, easy. is it the island time, right? Oh, always. And how did you deal with that? I mean, like, especially in Austin, we're yeah. like the way polar opposite end of the spectrum of island oh, time. Oh, absolutely. You, it took me probably about two months to really, but once I laid into just the relaxing of it. How was that? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, you just like, Okay, what do we, you know, I'm going for lunch, I'll see you in an hour and a half or two. Because you ordered chicken wings. They're, they cook them fresh on the grill. They're not, there's nothing frozen or not. They deep fry in, in saute pans on their stove. You know, they have deep fryers. But we went to a lot of smaller, there was a lot of smaller places. There wasn't a lot of, there was no real big restaurants in that end. So when you, uh, when you say that, like, you know, it took you a while to kind of get into the rhythm there. Is, because I'm thinking, as we live here, like, an escape and like slowing down and yeah. being on like some like that might be really good. You know, like being off the phone. I'm sure that it wasn't no awesome reception out there. No, you had a, yeah, right. Well, I'm standing here going up, and it, it was it was. But like it could yeah. also be uh, you know the same thing where once you get in that you've kind of well, just like when you were younger you enjoyed the mania of a kitchen. You know, right, like you, you might feel like you need something. Um, so what? What? How were you when you were there? Like when you when you kind of settled into that? I was pretty calm, man. Everything was just. I, I got into a rhythm yeah. with you know with the I, to get fresh herbs. I went because I had I had to free reign of the island. So when I didn't have, I had sometimes I didn't have clients for two weeks at a time. So you have free time time on your hands. What are you going to do? So I I got to explore the farms, try to find the little farmers. The, er, I had the great herb place that I would go. It took about thirty forty minutes to go get herbs. And they grew vegetables and different things. So I, my menus all planned all minute when whatever I happened to have when they were com- what, what I can get my hands on, right. what, what was available, farm to table, I guess it would be. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was, I mean, I met some interesting, interesting people. Uh, you definitely drop off the grid down there and just. Did you like that? I, I did. I loved the fishing, paddle boarding. Mia came down, spent a month with me. How'd you like it? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. It was yeah. it was really pretty. It was really cool too. It's different though, for sure. Yeah. It, was it like a crystal clear blue waters and stuff like that? Yeah, crystal clear blue waters, like sharks and turtles, like you sharks. were just Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like twenty foot sharks would just like come close to like shore and you're like, Well, well, yeah, no, not a lot of then, swimming then, right? Yeah, they were there's they called them the red sharks, like near sharks. They 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 don't have teeth. They kind of suck things. And it still looks like a shark to me. Man. I don't <laughs> True, know. And, do. and she learned to free dive. We had uh, we had oh, guides we worked with. So got, they like, took her out. Was, oh no, free dive. Yeah, Not she scuba. Uses free, no, she uses free dive. And then she goes. They're they were so pure in their thoughts. Like you don't need to school the gear. She she was down twenty five feet on a reef, man, just hanging out and yeah. little barracudas going around her and the sea Something life. Else, right? She was yeah. just 
just took right to it. And why, we used to, we had different, um, we'd go fish for lobsters or they, they're crawfish, they call them down there. Right off our reefs, man. We had like six or seven reefs off our bay that you would walk into and you could kind of find when the tide goes down, they'd go out and they'd shoot lobsters and bring, we'd bring lobsters back for our clients and stuff. Yeah. And they weren't small lobsters, they were like huge. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, all the, like the scoop, the diving, the free diving, that stuff can change your life. I mean, you'll you'll never oh, forget yeah. that. No, um, especially the girl that I was with, Sharon. My first time going out, it was like six a.m. Um, we were like lobster diving, and she was like, "Okay, go out," and we're like, "Okay," and she ditched us, me and this like other worker that was with us, and we were just like stuck there. All by ourselves, like the open water, and there's like Where did barracudas. She, go? she just, she she went, just like, like fifty <laughs> feet out away from like us, oh. and we're like, crap. That, well, that's their mentality. Oh, okay. I got it. She'll be okay. Okay, and I'm over this side work, and I'm like, <laughs> where they go? <laughs> you see them like they're you know thousand yards off. And yeah, little flippers coming up, and I'm like, oh wow. So then, when you come back here after you've kind of gotten into the groove, and I know whatever it led to you coming back here, but now that you get back into this, now do you feel like, man, may I, maybe I do like to be, you know, slow down my my rhythm? Uh, I'm not ready yet. I think there come a time for that, and I could see working on yachts. I, you know, looked into those and met a lot of interesting people. The yachts are nice. You could do some seasons and come in and out. That's why I get out of here. The yacht season now, if we were being in Austin this summer, hot would be up north, where to, you know the weather's perfect and it's a little cooler and yeah, you know you do your your three four months of the season and you come back down and anything to not be here in the summer. Yeah, I would. Do. That's that's what I'm kind of getting. As I get older, I'm like, eh, that's that's my plan. That's the only thing culinary school doesn't give chefs. There's no exit plan. You look, it's like being an athlete. You have a body, right? It's only going to last so long, and. What do you, how are you going to evolve? What are you going to do? Hmm. You that can't, could be a whole course, right? Right. You can't work the line forever. You can't, you know, you get into the executive chef roles and management. Perfect. But still, there still comes a point as that day-to-day grind there. So what is your ne- – how do you evolve and what's your exit plan? And right. That's, that's, that's always the question that you don't learn in culinary. Nobody gives you that answer. You have to kind of figure it out for yourself. Well, I think there's a lot of things. They, you know, they do they – in your case or, or in your case, do – they tell you like the how many hours you were going to be working, or you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that are kind of left out about like oh sure holiday like the and then you're in it and you're you know you either roll with it or you don't right but then you spend a lot of you, you're working longer hours than you ever anticipated but you know some people just get completely consumed by it in a good way and they just roll yeah. with it that's yeah. what they want to do that's what they signed up for yeah I knew <clears throat> I knew what what I was signing up for I mean because I'd been I you know I, I got a job work in the restaurant business and you, know, you see, you learn. And, and I think you learn pretty quick if it's for you or not, you know, like, yeah. you know, if you're working 12 hour days, you know, you're going to be working holidays, you know, I mean, that's just, that comes I with I think the one of the deciding factors is kind of when you guys, when you, somebody gets slammed, um, if they can't kind of like see through the chaos and like, or, or just embrace it at one point, yeah, the pressure, then they got to leave. You the know? pressure for yeah. me, I always had a, um, kind of a little ADD when I was a kid, you know, it took, I had to take Ritalin and I got myself off of it and just started taking like natural stuff like ginseng and stuff like that. So I could help focus because my mind wanders all over the place. So for me, you know, it's good the, for that. The chaos, yeah, prep, the, prep work. <laughs> chaos was, was, was great for me because then I can focus on five different things at once yeah. while I'm singing myself a song. Sure. You see what I'm saying? And just, sure. can just roll with it, you know? I, you know, you're kind of similar to my brother. He plays in a band. He doesn't he doesn't cook but he just works at like a like a t-shirt shop sure but he wants he's he loves his he's got a passion for music yeah and you, you remind me a little bit of that like you, you enjoy cooking which you have a passion absolutely. for that but like it also fuels you to be able to go play absolutely and gig well absolutely. tell me about what it's like being a musician in the the industry uh there's mean, a lot of you guys right? yeah there's yes abs- absolutely absolutely um before I moved out to Austin, the band that I played in uh, back home for for many years, uh, I met three of my members in the industry. You know, they there were both go, they yeah. were both bartenders. You know, and they're they are new their girlfriend, a now wife. You know, because she was she was a server, or she was a bartender, or whatever. And then we all just kind of linked up, and it evolved. Out here, I've met 
I've met I've met people th- through the not as many, um, but yes, there are definitely. It's pretty common that uh, you know I work in the restaurant business either if they work at a small restaurant or a big restaurant and it kind of fuels them to gig or buy buy you know get gear or whatever. It's kind of like a, a means to an end, I guess you sure. know, yeah. or just to keep a happy balance where you can say, okay, I work over here and I enjoy it, and it allows me to to do this or play on the weekends or like with these guys, if I have a gig coming up and I let them know, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. Ab- yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you need to set up for the members one day. Do a little acoustic set. Exactly. That's what we're thinking. <laughs> no, I'm more of like the... Uh, oh, is it some uh, rock and roll? Turn, yeah, I'm more of the turn crank, everything, crank, crank it, it and let it go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can play. I mean, I can when I'm at, in the acoustic. Yeah, I love it. I do love it. It's very soothing. It's very relaxing, but that's not... That's not me, man. I mean, I'm from Mississippi, the home of the blues. And we're gonna burn it. We're gonna burn it up, man. <laughs> um, you, so Chef Paul, you play a little. You strum just what? a little. Just guitar? a little mess. Yes. No, and he I'm, doesn't. Hey, she doesn't. <laughs> it's a noise. It's more I make noise, but I'm like anything else. I'm determined to keep going for it. Sure. Maddie's gonna take me to that next level. I so, think. do you ever start belting out songs? Does he? Um, no. No. He he does. So, he can belt. No, no, he 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 does. He sings songs yeah. on the. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I like playing. It's it's fun. It's relax. I think it's all a part of the arts. I don't know why music and I mean you're in a kitchen all day. We have 15 hours of music blasting. Of adults, course, absolutely. All different ranges, you know, because you, you work with a a cold, people from all over the world. You know, that's yeah. the blessing I think I've had. All the people I've worked with, all the, yeah, yeah. I don't know why we all absolutely. don't get along. I mean, you go in a restaurant, it's a melting pot of Ab- just absolutely culture, man. And I've I, I learned some of the best food in places. You'd be like. That is awesome. Yeah. I, I wake up every day not knowing anything. And I'm going to try to pick something up and go, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Even down to bottom. So that's the best way to do a pineapple? Oh, no shit. All these years? He's doing it wrong. Like, He's <laughs> doing this wrong. Those, those are good moments, though. Yeah, yeah man. I'm like, absolutely. God, that makes me upset. And I get mad. Why didn't I think of that? Then I get pissed. I should have thought it was so easy. But it isn't. It's just, it's just there, man. You know, when you take like an art like music and culinary arts uh music is you know you you can re- hear it and enjoy it or record it and always cherish it where music or, or food rather you guys are busting your tails where yeah. nobody's seeing the process and a lot right. of times you might not see a songwriting process but the end result if you don't take a picture of it right goes in someone's stomach right <laughs> it's gone yeah. so but they enjoy it and then they're left with this memory it's a Absolutely. very uh, it's a very different uh kind of way uh, like an art form well, I, think it, I think it's similar but for me that was, was it was similar because I can remember like the first time I heard a song that I loved and I can remember eating certain t- meals oh. or types of food I can right. remember the exact where I was who I was with if yeah. it was my grandmother or if it was my parents and I, I, I remember and it's like it is a picture in my, in my mind right. you're right but it still reminds me of like that's why I love that because of that like you said, instant gratification, and you feel, and you, and you, you get like emotion, just like when you hear somebody playing, and it makes, it gives you chills, and you're just yeah. like, oh, whether it's strumming a chord or they're just burning it up, you're like, oh, no, I like that, and just like with the food, you <laughs> like. And if know? food's done proper, you can definitely get chills, right? Oh, absolutely, in a good way. Absolutely. Yeah, it touches the soul, man, it warms the heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had a German chef in, uh, in calling at the CIA. And, you know, because at the time in the 90s, art was being thrown around a lot. The art, the art, yeah. the art. Yeah. And he goes, you want, you know, you guys, you, you do all this work. Some of we just say, doing all this work, everything's great. You want art? You want to see art? Look in the toilet in the morning. That's your art. <laughs> that's what you deserve. That's all. That's, but that's an old school guy a, going, stop, yeah. get, get over yourself. Right, 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 say, right, but, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, no, like, absolutely. Yeah. Put it, put cut and dry. But it is hard. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I got I, it. Right. He was just trying to keep it like in the middle of the road. Right. But, but I was looking going, wow. Well, it's true, though. And like, <laughs> if where's it go? Well, kind of literally, if, if there's not, but we have Instagram. So every, right, when yeah. you kind of think of food and like we, we all like think of pictures that are. Yeah, absolutely. Do you guys. um. Do you guys have social media for the Spanish Oaks? Yes. Okay. Yes. They got like of the dishes and whatnot. Yeah, we, they send all blasts out all the time and things we're doing that uh, our members can see and so to kind of keep them up to date with everything. And it's never open to the public, though. It's not like a thing. No, no. no. We, do, we do outside tournaments from time to time. We'll do throughout the year. And uh, there'll be non-members that come in. But as far as dining now, you need to know a member to come in and... Uh, do have any of the members ever like request like catering or anything from you guys? Yeah, yeah, we do. Oh, yeah? We do a lot of events. Um, we have 
At their like homes or just wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll go yeah. out to their homes. Nice. That's fun. I enjoy that. That is fun. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Get out of the kitchen. Well, you. What, no, you, we're in the kitchen. We're in their kitchen. You're in their kitchen. We're in their kitchen. Some of some of the 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 time well, we've gone sometimes, and then we've uh, uh, gone you know gone to their house where it's been. I've been with with Paul or with Matt or whoever, and generally one of them or both. Uh, we usually go. And we'll do. We did a one time. We did a wedding, catered a wedding with that, and then or we go to their. So it's been a couple of times off site. Generally, it's at their house. I was and, gonna say so off site. How would that? You guys have the equipment for that? I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes. And they'll usually have a place that has kind of a. Well, we can make it happen. I mean, if it's kind of a, even if it's kind of a makeshift or endo, for lack of better words, a little ghetto, we can make it work, man. I yeah. mean, we can yeah. make it. We'll make it. We'll make it happen. Sure. You know, because we have portable burners and so forth. We have fryers we can take if we need to do stuff like that. But it's I really know. nice going to their house because a lot of these people. I mean, obviously, they have a really nice kitchen, yeah. and it's like. Brand new, so it's kind of like you're getting to break it in for the first time. Yeah. You know? I mean, so Spanish Oaks, they must have some of the nicest homes in Austin. Is that? Am I wrong? Yeah, about just, that some or, uh, proper, just some beautiful property, just some beautiful homes. You're, in you're there. probably you're probably right or close right. to it. I mean, yeah. and you can't just go see it. I mean, it's a gated community. No, no, you can't community. get in there. Uh, uh-uh. not unless you like Paul, like like shit like Paul said. If you know somebody, right? Or they're or they're expecting you because you, you have can a guard. You have fly to fly a drone to. over. I don't know. They might shoot you down, man. That security, that security out there, man. They're not. No, I was, I was, I wasn't saying do that. But I watched a, like no, no. a video of. Oh yeah, they did some drone. There's on if you go to, I believe on just a, the basic general website, you can get on and I think that's you can see I, the drone. I was looking at it a little bit. It's a beautiful but, course. Yeah, you wouldn't want to bring your own drone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can. I don't know. Maybe. I don't oh, know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, All I know is, but, is yeah. the security guards are strapped up. They're they're ready. They're not the. They're not your rent a pig with a whistle. They're ready to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. seem every. You know. I only get uh, a little glimpse, but you guys are always great, and then the security is always great. Yeah, yeah they're always they're really pretty nice. laid. I think even yeah. the community, the community is very laid back. For you know, well, it's Austin. Yeah, you know, I it's think that's not, uh, not not as laid back as the Bahamas, but no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when you got to get on the seventy one, you're going what seventy miles an hour and yeah. hard hard left into Spanish Oaks, and we only yeah, run road to Kings Highway going up and down, and uh, the biggest thing made laugh is. The top speed really speeding out. Most of them was like 25, 30 miles an hour. Just driving in the middle of this night. They don't even drive fast. Oh, that, yeah. In the Bahamas. Oh, you'll see. I've seen cars where my house was. <laughs> it's a straightaway. And there was just one tree everybody hit. But nobody ever got killed. But there'd be like bumpers left <laughs> from where these guys. Like, but it's straight. It's like, how do they hit a tree when you're right. coming straight and you're going slow? And it's like, oh, that was so and so. You can go 40 miles up island, and by the time you got back, they knew where you were. Coconut well, Telegraph knew. Well, I just recently went, I mean, there's people who travel all the time, but, you know, I, I had to go to Chicago. I told you that. Yeah, yeah. And I got off the plane, and, you know, there's two car lengths in between the cars, and they're, they're driving, you know, 55, 60 down the highway. And I was like, wow. And I felt like I was like, wow, ah, yeah, I'm on. Well, nice yeah. and relaxed here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it got off here, and I took a lift home, and we were going 80 miles an hour, and I got home in like 30 seconds, and I was like, gosh, yeah, what man. a contrast. What a contrast. Austin is is, is very fast-paced. It has been. It, it, the hardest part, I think, when you were was down there after maybe six, seven months, when they come home for that week or so at a time, people it kind of got a little claustrophobic in a sense because all these people are around, and you're kind of like... Yeah, and you walk like going into a Starbucks. You were like, right? It's no, yeah. like, too many. It's like, why is everybody crushing on each other? Let's just. Yeah. So that part I like to try. I always try to retain. Just yeah. Kind of just. So everybody's like cramped on top of each other for yeah, no, here, no reason. Yeah, you just feel there. Everything is so spread out. And oh no, here really, it's like. Yeah, that. yeah. When I came back, it was tough after a while because you're so used to. I mean, if you see twenty five people, thirty people in a day, you saw a lot of people. I think that's what I'm kind of like, what, even with like driving, like I said, there was like spaces between yeah, cars oh, and here yeah. everybody's riding real close and oh, it's, it's very populated though. So Oh, yeah, it's been yeah. growing. I've been, I've been here 20 years and I watched a lot of the, the growth. So you've seen, uh, you've seen it all. I, I've seen a lot. I mean, where we are, where the club was, it was, there was nothing out there. And we, they just said, you're hills, living so hills. far. Yeah, just hills. You're living so far. Why are you living way out there? And it's only really 16 miles from downtown. Right. Fourth and fifth, it's not that far. Forget minus traffic like this evening, Sunday. That's a you can do that. No yeah. problem. 16, yeah. 16 miles is nothing. Yeah. Um 
But when you add in, you know, how whatever the population is now. Oh God. Yeah, it can turn that that sixty miles can turn into uh, something you don't want to do ever again. No, it's like it's California traffic. We came out in ninety seven with Michelangelo's when ninety seven ninety eight when we were looking to build a plant, and uh, there was three sixty. Yeah. It was a that road was a ghost town. There was no such thing as like any traffic out there. To Lake Lake Austin was quiet, man. It was it was makes open. you wonder okay. what well, we got three or four years out. So, are you driving? I am. Oh yeah! Mm-hmm. Wow, took a leap of faith there. I was going to ask because I'm, my daughter's five, and I'm thinking about that. <laughs> Let me tell you, scares you? No. Are you, are you okay? I'm Chef Paul. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I trust her. I really it, okay. Am I a little scared for? Her? Of course, but I, you know, well, she's got a good head on her shoulders. She got her first car. Nice. Mm-hmm. She's working and she's What'd paying you get? for what some kind of, of car. It? A Honda HRV. Oh, nice! <laughs> and cute little thing. She loves, it. and she's helping pay for it. And her insurance, she understands. You know, it's not like here; it's free. You know, you gotta, oh, yeah. you gotta work. You know, to get some things. Big responsibility. She gotta main, maintain it and everything. So, but now I didn't realize, like she had field hockey this morning or getting up for school in the morning. Oh, I don't have to do any done. of that, man. I'm, it's like you're starting all over yeah, again. Sign it's like, me I up. don't see her. Bye. <laughs> see you when, how you doing? Right, you know? Well, so that, that's that's pretty nice. That's a sure. nice part of it. And, and Matt, just, it's just you. No no kids, no 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 woman or anything like that? Nothing? Just, just the not band? Yet. Yeah, that's it. Just music. I mean, I figured... So when I moved out here, uh, I, I, I dated a girl for a long time before I moved up. Unfortunately, it was part of when we broke up and I figured oh, I'll be in Austin. I'll be, I'll find, I'll find a woman out here, man. You know, it usually happens. They There's say plenty of not, women out here. Exactly. So it's like, I'm not looking for it. It'll come, it'll happen like it's supposed to, you know, oh, we're in the same boat, you know, that's my, my path. And so it'll happen like it's supposed to. And I figure a musician, I can cook, you know, it's hey, the full package. Be, you know? How could you not? It'll be, it'll Maddie, one 800 give him a call. <laughs> a handsome guy, plays music and cook you a meal. That's How could you, where are you going to mess with that? Get a little love. <laughs> A little love song going there. Right. What, what, are they, what do they call it? You serenade them? You yeah. serenade them, yeah. yeah. A little nurturing going on. Yeah. You'll be good. <laughs> I can do that. I can do that. I'm going to break out the acoustic. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, I mean, obviously, Spanish Oaks is where you're at. Do you have plans? Or And both of you guys. Do you guys, do you guys like where you're at? you guys happy? I like where, I do like where I'm at, but I'm always thinking, you know, uh, uh, I still have my family back home in Mississippi, you know. How's that? I think about them all the time. Um, I mainly miss, uh, I, I mean, I, I miss all of them. I miss my, my aunts and my uncles and, yeah. and my cousins and my brothers and my mom and my dad, you know, and my stepmom. And I mean, I miss all my family, all of them, you know, uh, and any of the ones I forgot. <laughs> yeah. I miss all of them. And, but, you know, uh, like they're so cool and they're, and they love me. They're just like, it's your life. Go live your life. Yeah. We'd love for you to stay here with us forever, but you you gotta go live your life. If you want to go to Austin, go to Austin. If you want to go to California, go to California. If you want to move out to the Caribbean, go do it. We wish we could do it, you know, yeah. but we can't. So you can go do it. And so here that's I am. It's not yeah. easy being away from family sometimes, but that's great. Uh, that's that they all support the, you oh, they about. they're so supportive. Like like they're, I'd say, easily hands down. Um, my mom and dad are easily my biggest fans <laughs> on the music and on the oh, food. Oh, cool! Oh, they yeah, love so they, they support it. Uh, oh, she loves it. She was like. She's like, you got so many guitars. I can't believe you got all these guitars. How are you going to play all these guitars? And I was like, well, I tell her, I said, well, mom, you know, when you're on stage playing, because the band I was in back home and we played a lot. We yeah. played every Friday and Saturday. I mean, we played all the time. And it's for 10 years. So this is all, you know, it's consistent. Nice. And she's like, I said, well, me and my mom, I said, if you're on stage playing, you know, and you break a string or something happens, you got to have a backup. Oh, you got, you, you know, you, you're in the music, you got, you can tell them whatever you want. You got to yeah. have your excuses. But you need your single mm-hmm. coil, your humbuckers, <laughs> another single coil. I tell yeah, right, right. you, you need well, all that, this. Well, now you're giving away all my secrets, you know. <laughs> 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 no, but I, but I, I bought all. That was one thing. I bought all mine. Uh, it's except for except for the very first one my, that got me started. My dad got for a uh, birthday present for me. And you're you you said your folks are still out there. Is your dad? He doesn't have that that trailer anymore. No, no, no. So all right. So back to that. So eventually they got actually they sold it. So him and his business partner sold that off to this guy in Florida because he offered them a fair amount of money for it. And they were like, okay. So, but they stayed in the concession ba- business and they did mostly, and this is when I started learning how to, how to smoke stuff because they got a big smoker, 
and they start doing like you know very simple stuff, smoking you know like dogs and burgers and chicken legs and turkey legs and polar sausages and so forth and so on. And then it evolved, and it got kind of out of hand. Um, eventually, my father got out of it, but his business partner stayed in it. Unfortunately, he passed away, I believe. Not my dad, his business partner, passed away last year. Um, but, however, he kept with the in the concession business all this time. We're talking from the mid-'80s until, until last year. And he did some really cool things because he accumulated – so much uh, equipment over the years and all and going to all these festivals and making all this money he went to all the disaster reliefs that have happened in the last Uh probably 20 whatever years all the hurricanes all that he'd go take people water he'd go feed he'd take his whole crew so we're gonna go feed these people just give it away we're gonna go feed these people we're gonna take them water like we're gonna do the right thing we're gonna help them out i have the means to do it let's do it and so i thought that was that was really awesome sure Uh, absolutely yeah Cool. So then father got uh, – he's kind of trying to slide back into it now. He's got a little uh, seafood market back home, and he's been jabbering in my ear about opening a – he didn't really want to do it. But once again, his business partner that he's working with now is trying to do like maybe some po' boys and stuff like that. And I'm like – I don't know. He's kind of asking me like, hey, I was like, I'm not coming home. Not yet. I said, but I'll be <laughs> glad to you know help you out with some rest because I'll go home for Christmas. I was like, I'll be glad to help you out with some recipes and stuff if that's what you want to do. But I would say just stick to doing what you're doing right now. Sure. You know, and, and do that and see that through. And if you start making hand over fist, that would be really smart. I mean, don't jump, don't jump out there yet. Wait till you get the market going, right? And everything's and you're making good money with that. And then if you want to have a little side shop where you sell five sandwiches and that's all you do, that would not be a bad idea. But not yet. I mean, you've only, it's on this this thing's still in an infant stage. You know, sure. be smart about it. You know, is what I tell him. Well, that could be your out if you ever want to go go back. It probably will, but I'm not. But like I said, I'm still in Austin. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to go back just yet. You know, I mean, right. I'm still going to feel. I mean, I've only been out here for five and a half years. So I mean, still, it's still relatively for me. I'm still relatively new to a play to this right. place. Is your you know? current band gigging out here? Uh, we we played a show in July. Okay. Yeah. What's uh, what's your band's name? <laughs> I, I love this. Come on, man. Introducing I I, on Main I didn't. I, I, I love this. I didn't come up with it. It's they came up with it. It's called the Mississippi Bus Stop. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. What? What's? What's? What's wrong with that? I just think it's funny because I'm from. You know, I'm from there, and they're not. But they're like, this is our name. What do you think? And I was like, oh, well, oh it, it was already established as their no, name. No, they, 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 they thought it. They'd been thinking about names, and then the one names night they're weird. Right? And then yeah, right, 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 right. And then one night at practice, they were like, so all right, so one, one, so the drummers from Texas, our bass players from Ireland. All right, and then I'm from Mississippi, and they're like, "This is what we think. This is what we're thinking." You gotta remember, this is an Irish guy telling me this, and he's like, "This is gonna be the name of our band," but in a really thick Irish accent. He goes, "We're gonna be called Mississippi Bus Stop." What do you think? And I was like, "I mean, come on, bro. I'm from Mississippi, of course. You know, yeah. yeah. Why we, not? You know, we all got on the bus in Mississippi. <laughs> yeah. and I, it's perfect. I think exactly. it's perfect. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's just right now we're just doing. Um, Kind of like an in- instrumental, really, because that's how we started out. Yeah. We had a couple of singers here and there. Is, yeah, right. And we had a couple of singers here and there, but we kind of like the power the power trio. Do you do what, um, covers or are you doing? Oh no, own? I stopped doing covers a long time ago, man. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I mean, I did for a long time, and I, and and there's nothing wrong. I, I'm all right. I'm something like this. So when you're first starting to learn. I think that's very gratifying for you to learn. Not only are you learning your chords and you're learning melody, but you're learning somebody that you really like. So that makes you feel like a million bucks when, you, when you're when you like, you love this artist and you can play their song. Kind of you know? be like a recipe. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So for me, that was the, my building blocks to learn my chords, my majors and my minors. Mm-hmm. And then you start learning scales, which I don't think in terms of scales, I just think of notes that outline the chord because that's all you need. That's how you create a melody, right? And then I just... I like, I mean, I grew up on Jimi Hendrix, man. I grew up on Steve Ray Vaughan, you know, Eddie Van Halen, you know. I Not mean, some bad things to grow you know, up with. So, I mean, like, that's that's my mentality. Yeah, you've you know? said all you need to as far as, like, I trust you there. Yeah. <laughs> you could be saying, I don't know, all, all over the map. with. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, it all started with the blues and everything, all music, at least in America, as far as America is concerned, it all came from the blues anyway. So, sure. I mean, you know, if without that, you wouldn't have any rock and roll and you wouldn't have anything, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Well, we're talking about music, Chef Paul. What do you listen to? I go. I can listen to Gamut. Pearl Jam's one of my f- favorite bands. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I love Pearl Jam. Yeah, he loves Pearl. Um, yeah, we talk about it all the time because one of my not to interrupt him, but one of my favorite guitar players growing up was uh, Mike McCready. Their yeah. their uh, their lead. I mean, they have two guitar players, but Mike McCready's the one who's the really. Yeah. He's the really good. He's, one. He's he was one. Yeah, of, yeah. He, he was one of my favorite Jam guitar players. And 
I think Yellow Lead Better. Uh, that's, that's, that's my favorite. That's like it's a great song, man. That's, that's a, a great. Song. That's a great song. <laughs> when I had my restaurants, we had I had a TV in the kitchen, and I would put on live from New York City their video. Oh, cool! And it would start at the beginning of service. My cooks hated me by the end of it, <laughs> but the timing was perfect because by the time. The last meal was going out. Leadbetter was playing. Oh, that's awesome. And it would just awesome. line in the Leadbetter. That's and just, awesome. That is awesome. That's you awesome. just take your yeah. apron off, you put it down. That's end awesome. End of the night, man. We're done. That's awesome. It, it was, yeah, it drove them crazy. I mean, they were so sick of that tape. They tried to hide was it. Was it every night? Every night. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little ADD. But it brought me luck. I felt good about it. I mean, yeah. this, is what, this is what works for me. So. But I understand that completely. And, it's kind of uh, like wearing... But yeah, it was obnoxious, sure, I would guess. I can't blame him. You don't have to listen to And Mia, to it these, these fogies talking about music, what are you listening to? <laughs> um, I kind of like indie, and I really like jazz. That's Like jazz? Yeah. Oh, there yeah. you go. Nice. nice. Eight-hour nice. drive to New Orleans or an hour flight. You, mm-hmm. you got all that. That's where that's the home of jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been out to New Orleans? I have not. I've only drove past it on like trips and stuff. Shit ball. Been there a few times. You need to bring her out. There. She's ready. <laughs> you know what? Traveling with her is great. We she went up for a little field hockey thing and did great. But you know what we're ready to do? We ate we finished at we're based in Connecticut. We went up to Boston one day, ate through Boston, through a little their little it at our north end up there. Ate all the food there. Next day, went down to New York City. Ate through everything. We wanted. She'd lo- we'd love to just go eat. We'll just go. and We walked in. The restaurant in Boston, North, that was interesting. The bread came out. Like, no, look- actually, it was funny before that. Go ahead. We were trying to find a restaurant. And we, we, we came upon this, like, corner, and it was just this restaurant all by itself. And we were like, should we eat there? Like, I don't know. And this lady whispers in my ear, like, no, it's really good. Like, you should go in there. So we go in there. Those are the good ones, right? Yeah. yeah hold and them so we go in there, and they gave us this, like, weird bread. It just looked like grocery store bread, and we're like, oh, Jesus. It was suck. okay. It was a softer Italian-style bread. It was okay, but I'm yeah. like, oh, it's just more for the, uh, you know, the tourists coming through. Or- oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. And then we got, then we ordered our calamari, I think. And the calamari. And, oh, my God. It was oh. so good. Oh, sure. Spot on. Perfect. They were fine. Cooked yeah. Perfect. The tomatoes. The sauce was perfect. The acid. I'm an acid kind of guy with tomatoes. It was just a, the sauce was perfect, and then she liked it so much. She had a penny, I think. With that. I had like just regular like tomatoes and um, spaghetti and red sauce pasta, and then he got um, broccoli 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 Yeah, and I that's ate good choice. My plate. In his place. Uh-huh. <laughs> you guys, I, so the good. sausage and broccoli rabe and fuseli with a little a little basil in there. It was simple, put together, great, man. It was like, per- and then we went over to Mikey's for the cannolis. It's been there forever, this shop. She it has probably 30 or 40 different cannolis they make. Yeah. Ca- cash only place, man, and it oh, was yeah. delicious. Us, I got some pics of it. It was, but it's different. I mean, there's a lot of history. That's where I hope Austin's catching up. There's establishments that have been there for years and years and years. And here we see places. In Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, same thing, man. Oh, yeah. I was been there years. I mean, sorry, Austin, but I was disappointed when I, I was, this is a food town, this is a food town. I was so excited to get here, and I left Chicago, and I got here, and I was like, where's the food? <laughs> what are you guys talking about the food? Right. I, I said yeah. the same thing when I moved here, too, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, But we really do have some really good spots. We do. It's, it's kind of like you. Maybe you almost need to be like connected to, to just be in. You got to be in, invested in finding this. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what it was. I had to go travel, and I would ask people. I'd be like, "Hey, where can I go get some good food with this? Like something." And then so I started driving all over town, and I found, I found my little gym, my little places, my oh, little go tos. Well you know, then I got to raise the flag. Where's so I always ask. We'll start with you, if well, that's all right. Where, where where do you like to go eat? Name so it depends. Two. It depends on what I'm in the mood for. You know, if I'm in the mood for a burger or a fried chicken, which I still haven't found a fried chicken place yet. Um, You're just going to have to settle for Chick-fil-A, right? <laughs> uh, it's not It's not bad. It's not, but I'm, you know, in, I'm from the deep <laughs> south, man, so fried chicken's like a big deal for us. That's like, yeah. That's, yeah, you, so at, yeah. Home, at home. That's man, part man. of our culture. Yeah, that's where I found the best fried chicken was at home. At home. Yeah. Right. That's Ooh. the best invention next, man, mm-hmm. and there's your next step right there. Yeah. Fried chicken. Fried there you chicken. go. Well, yeah, we have, what, what do we have here? We have Lucy's. Lucy's. We have, 
I know we have an. Oh, we well, have. There's Gus's. Bird, Bird Biscuit. Yeah. There's, there's, yep. there's Gus's downtown. Gus's. Well, that's Gus's. from Memphis, so I've had that. I it's think that's in, all three of them, though. Yeah. Like the big guys. Yeah. Um. Okay, so where do you go though? I don't go for. I'm, I've had or forget fried chicken. No, okay, where, okay. Where are your so I like have. I'll go down. I'll go downtown to different places for certain things. I do like. For, if I'm gonna get a euro, always Phoenicia. That's my go to, and it's. I like it because it's the the older ladies in there, and they make everything in house. It's like it's a del. Like they have deli, they have pastries. They don't just have euros, which is what I get. They have a lot of other things, and it's like a little grocery store too. So you can get. Different types of things. As They've well. got one of those in uh, Houston. Yeah, I think that's the original one. Yeah, I think that's the original one, and this is the second one. But yeah, that's my go-to for for euros, hummus, so anything like yeah. that, anything kind of Greek Mediterranean. That's that's the go-to for that's sure. A very good suggestion for sure. Yeah. yeah. Any any other places you enjoy? Um, I, you know, there's a couple of different places that I would go for burger for a burger, a decent burger, not that expensive, but it's kind of it's been hit or miss sometimes. Sometimes it's been really good, and then sometimes it's been kind of like, uh, you ever been to Black Sheep Lodge? No, but that's right off Lamar, right? Yeah, and it's packed, and or it's, it's you can sit outside and I've been in there, but not yeah. Eaten you can there. sit outside and you can hang out and you have some beers and whatever, and it's it's a chill place, and it's it's inexpensive. Another thing too for me, it's like inexpensive, so it's like that's make yeah. that makes. I'm always thinking, you know, I want good, I want quality food because it's decent, but also it's not overpriced because there's a lot of overpriced places around town. I think we all know that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Have you so, been over to that ABGB ever? What is it? ABGB Austin. The beer works and garden, yeah, yeah, over here. No, 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 not the South Austin. The one over there. Uh, well, it's right by that. The uh, black, the black. Shirt. Yeah, yeah I, I know you're talking. You want to talk? This uh, used to be across from the old uh, oh. mu- music lab. Yeah, yeah. We've, I guess, we've talked about this. Yeah. Because we've yeah. every time I've run into you, we sit there. And yeah, talk about we, <laughs> we talk about we talk about all the rock and roll rentals. We talk about right. yeah, we talk about all that stuff. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, if you're ever to go, ABGB's got some good food too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think. I'm not sure where he, I think he's from New uh, New Orleans. Chef uh, over there. So if I'm gonna get the uh, if I'm gonna get the Creole because I grew up going down to New Orleans my whole life sure. as well. So I have a very very strong taste for that type Good. of food. So Good if food. I'm gonna, that's why you need to go. So for, oh, it's <laughs> melting pot for sure. Um, so for me, the best that well, and, and I haven't had everywhere, but I know, but I, I know, and it's consistent is the uh, Evangeline Cafe. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll go there for for certain Man. things. All right, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm saying it for the record. I got to go there. I can hold myself accountable when okay. I do this. Yeah, I mean, it's like I mean, like I said, I mean, it's not going to be the best you've ever had, but for for Austin and for consistency, and it's and it's good. Like I'm saying, the guy's from the guy's actually from South Louisiana, so he yeah. know, he knows what's up, you know. Right, so yeah, like, yeah. so yeah, it's what it's, about the uh, the one over there off William Cannon? It's called. Uh, Oh the uh, yeah 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 the uh, yeah 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 the uh, Cypress Cafe or there Cypress Creek go. yeah uh, it's Cypress not Grill, not bad a little bit bland for me but not bad okay so Evangeline beats beats that one out in my humble opinion Mia yeah, where do you go um I really like Red Ash That's, it's really good go. raised correctly <laughs> um, Home Slice is really good pizza. For like down here. Okay, well, can I just throw on the Via three one three? Is that in there? No, I haven't been here yet. Well, see, I'm I'm not, that's, that's everybody I talked to have mentioned either both or one or the other. Yeah, right. yeah. I've and you know the funny thing is I've been to Via three one three. I think it's like this because I haven't been to Home Slice. I think it's like there's no good pizza in Austin. So when you find one, you're like, I found it. Yeah, right. So I'm stuck in Via three one three. But people, I've heard Home Slice is really good. Oh, Home, yeah. Home Slice has a clam pie that. Oh, good. That. With the it garlic kills it. Oh, it yeah. kills it. I, you know, Augie's we we like. It's close. Cool. We're into burbs. But I went in once. I go, can I get, bring some clams? You make a clam pie. They're like, it looked at me like I had three heads. I go, please. <laughs> I just want to make a clam pie. But when we got to Home Slice, that clam pie reminded me to North East. Cool, cool. Um, the Via Three One Three. You need to go. Okay. Uh, there's two brothers, the Hunt brothers, and it started with the trailer, and they're going to come out of the podcast. But nice. that place is just. It's blown up. It's it's huge. You you gotta go, and I'll I'll, I'll make a deal. I'll go to Home Slice. And you guys go there. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just do a little a little crawl? We'll do a pizza crawl, man. Pizza crawl yeah, could be good. But be cool. I I would like tap out after the first place because once you <laughs> throw a pizza go in nuts, front of me, I'm like, you're done, huh? <laughs> oh, I can <laughs> I can eat, man. You, yeah, oh, this kid, forget it. <laughs> no, it, this would take some serious like uh, discipline for me to like be like one nice. and done. We nice. don't have to gorge out on the whole pizza. I mean, I can, but I'm just saying. Oh, I can too. <laughs> but then I'm usually, you know, on a couch. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty much done after that. Any other spots that you uh, enjoy? 
Yeah, um, I don't know the name of it, but it's um, this little hole in the wall Chinese place on Sixth Street. Okay, she likes that. Mm-hmm. One. That one's always that one's. I enjoy that one. Yeah. I love pho. I need Vietnamese. We have a real pho Mandarin up by us. It does a real nice job. They've been there now probably about eight nine years. How long have you guys? You've been in the same house for twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. Okay. Is that you? Got any other places that you need to mention? No, just those are like my top three. Those are good. Yeah. You have Paul. Well, she took my top three. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, kidding! Oh, man, she, she's looking. She's all like, "Oh, these are my top." But that's why we enjoy our food. Um, but we used to have. Oh, I'm trying to think. That's really out in the burbs. That's really. It's not much. How about 20 years here? And you've been, you know, cook you know, in all kinds of leadership yeah. positions. You're, you know, you're the Sioux over at uh, Spanish Oaks. Have you seen any any of your, you know, team or not even Spanish Oaks just throughout sure. the 20 years go off to open anything that you want to mention? I haven't, actually. No. I haven't seen a lot of them. But um, a lot of them were younger guys who said their thing. I wish I had... Uh, I don't get out enough, as most chefs say. I wish I got out more and got into the scene. I just, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. But like the, like I said, for me, we brought her to Red Ash. That was one of my favorite. I got there, and like that, they're hitting on all cylinders, and it's just from the from the food to the wine list to everything that's going on. But pho, I, I, this Vietnamese food, I go to the village over there, you know, on what's where they have all the grocery stores and all the different the Chinese. There's a Chinese barbecue place I really like down. It's by Target off of uh, 180, you know, right by Target. What's the name of that place? No. I'm horrible at names, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Wait, I mean, you you don't get out much. That's I, I just I'm don't still, get I'm, out much. I But when I get it's... I don't... I, I, I get out all day, all over yeah, the place. Yeah, she's all over. I just but don't then get when out I get enough. home, I don't get out much either. No. So uh, I, we just... I never get out. I mean, yeah. I don't get out too much. I mean, on my days off, it's... For me, like off on Monday, I can play disc golf, practice, back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with a beer and a burger, man. Yeah, honest to God, or big old bowl, yeah, yeah, yeah. full, man. Yeah. That's pretty easy. I like. For me. I mean, I eat some. I, a lot of times for me, it's it's sim- simplicity because I we grew up. Well, for me, it's a lot of comfort food, right? And it's a lot of things that might take all day, but you look forward to it, like, you know, red beans and rice or gumbo. That's something that you do all day. It's not like something you make and then that's it. And you eat on it for a couple of days because right. it gets better over the days, you know, right. just like anything. But it's a lot of comfort food, unfortunately, where I'm yeah. from. It's a lot of heavy food and fried food, which you don't eat all that stuff that much anymore because we've all learned that it'll kill you. Right. <laughs> so we have to try to eat better. Yeah. There's, uh, at least there's... with my family. But there are certain things that it's just, it makes me feel like home. Yeah. You know, like, so I'll kind of gravitate towards that. And I agree with the beer and the burger. Yeah. And you can just sit yeah. back. And Vespios. Nice, I love Vespios. Nice, nice yeah, area. there you go. You do a nice job. I like the Italian food. You need to, uh, Christian Kahlo was on here from OP Italian. Oh, the yeah, JW. yeah. You should probably, I got to try. I got to jump down to that. Yeah, check that out. Um, Italian, that's, see, that's like Austin, like I'm from Chicago. Yeah. There's, you can't, like, replicate the kind of Italian I, I've eaten there. Yeah. I mean, I have not been to Red Ash, but um, I know a couple of chefs who've worked over there. So they do all kudos to all the crew, man. They just always haven't ever had a bad meal there. Cool, it's yeah. always been. A, no, it's good to know. So tell me about the deep dish pizza in Chicago. Uh, and so I grew up in Chicago, and the honestly, the deep dish pizza is not like if you order a pizza from like your local pizza joint. You order a, a pie like you're thinking. It's right. just a pie. Like yeah. with it's not a deep dish. The oh, deep it's just di- you just consider it a regular pizza? No, no, no. What when you get a deep dish, typically you're like in the city, there's like Geno's, there's a yep. couple like staples. Right, 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 right. So but that so I mean, sorry, Chicago, but like that's a really weird concoction. You know, <laughs> upside down. It's a pie, man. It's just a yeah, pie. it is. It, it is. But, Bill, it's thick. Right? It's but good, though, man. When I think pizza in Chicago, I don't think deep dish pizza. Okay. Okay. I think okay. of just okay. a typical, you know, circular pie like we all think of. Thinner crust, New York style. Um, you and like you said, yeah. I guess thin. No, no, not thin like New York. <laughs> yeah, just right. kind what, of. Um, yeah, there's a different. No, there's. No, I, this I, know, is, I know. This I know. Is, not like I know it's a touchy stuff. You know, right like now. it's going to have a little like more like a thicker hand toss like than, as, than like the thin like I, I know what you're saying. I, I know what so, you're saying. I know what you're but, saying. But if 
if I go to Chicago right now and, and, and to any of the surrounding suburbs and order a pizza from anywhere, you know, whatever the name is, Michael's, Leo's, they're all over the place. Right. It's so much better than anything I've ever eaten in Austin. Oh, yeah. And it blows my mind because I don't understand it. But I've never, if the debate is, a, a, you know, deep dish versus the thin crust in New right. York, then uh, New York wins because I, you can't, yeah. I don't eat pizza with a fork and a knife. No. And that's what you got to do with that deep dish. So, you know, from Chicago, there. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. That's a. That's fair. It's a fair answer. Well, well it's we, a bizarre. Di- I don't. I, I actually never enjoyed ordering that. Nah, really, it takes yeah. a while to get to it. I mean, I had to load like the parmesan to yeah. dry it up. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like just to be like, this is because right it's now, just it's, a mess. It is. Oh, it is. Okay. It's a- absolutely a mess. <laughs> no, it is held together in a pan. Right. Yeah. And then you cut it out of the pan. And you know all the sauce falls so out. Yeah. Just, so but I want to like mess. fold a piece of pizza. That's what you know, yeah. so I'm, I'm, exactly, exactly. Yeah. You should be able to fold it and it stays right. That's yeah, it. I, I oh, live yeah. in Texas now. I'm allowed to say all this. Oh you yeah, say, yeah, you can say whatever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, yeah. We run home. Her first place is Rose Pizza. I right. introduced it to her because I went as a kid, and my parents went. It's been there a hundred years. It's so when you guys forever. go back, you go, so we when we go to Chicago, you we know. get off, we go right to Portillo's. She knows, man. Right, you know, that's yeah. the spots. Where Pepe's if you in go New home. Haven, same thing, man. I go to my mom's house, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's cheaper too, right? Uh, that's, that's uh, the best well, I'll do, she, you know, she's got some things she can, like I said, she can do really well, but I, I, that's part of that comfort is I like to cook for her because she cooked for me my whole life yeah. and then kind of helped me get on my way for where I am now and like I said she's got certain things she likes to do but when I'm there I like for her not to have to do any of that where she yeah. can just hang out and she's always like hey you want me to do anything and I'm like no I just want you to sit there and chill just talk we just hang out and she'll just talk she'll sit there and talk and watch me <laughs> and bring your six drink she's your favorite fan right I've got some there there you go yeah there I've got go. some there I've got like a collection man it's ridiculous I've got yeah. I've got easily over 20 guitars that's easily. awesome easily that's I'm awesome. only I'm you only see, I've lim- I'm, I have nothing Oh, as far as guitars go, oh, it's like <laughs> it's like a whole. No, anything you got count. Yeah, they're beautiful. Oh, no, wow. I love. I got, love. No, I mean you've got plenty. I mean, well, plenty. I'm on like a permanent honeymoon with my my guitar and and the, my <laughs> this, this. I just love. I, I love, love absolutely. <laughs> it's like <laughs> absolutely. It's like somebody picking up like a glass of wine at night. Yeah. So, like, you and your brother play together, and your brother oh, took whenever, the music part. So, it all started when you were guy. So, were when I was younger, I was playing guitar, <clears throat> and he was like. You know this kind of like nerdy scrawny kid, and I was always like, so he's gonna, your younger brother. Yeah, okay, like, you gotta be a cool kid, right? play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and he picked it up, and I and I eventually, you know, went down all kinds of funky paths in my life. Sure. And he watched me, and he said, "I'm not doing that, but I'll play the guitar." <laughs> right, 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 right. So he, I, I taught him in a weird way. I right. Yeah. So he, um, he's always played, and he still plays in a band in New Orleans. Nice. He's got a band that he like writes all the music for. He's got a weird arrangement. He writes everything and he kind of hires a band, but they he doesn't pay them. They just, right. you know, they divvy up how they do the gigs. But sure. like he writes all the parts, which I've not understood completely. Cause when I go with people, which you can probably completely relate to, is we just kind of work with each other. And like yeah. you gotta feel it. You gotta so and I, I'm like dying because I've I taught him how to play guitar. Or, or showed him like sure. that much. I showed him what not to do with his life also. Good. So I really want to say, look, you got to pick up the guitar with a stranger and like you play something and then they play something and then you feel something and, if we, and they yeah, feel if something. We can, we can act, then we know we can make music. And then you just make something. Yeah. And then it's it's nobody's, it's yours. It's our creation. Yeah. It's yeah. our creation. Yeah. Is that any different than when you put... New guys into a into a brigade in the kitchen. For sure. No, that's what I'm saying. It's the right? same thing. Yeah. How are we gonna that's all yeah. Yeah, yeah once we kinda fill out the chemistry we'll and then we can yeah. Yeah. No, the parallels between uh like a band or like I've a always yeah, I've like, always can really compared them. Like I said, they like run the same gamut for sure. Yeah, like when you said that, like you see the guy that's in the weeds and you guys all hop on and help. I mean, that's the same thing as like a band going and like some the drummer's off beat and you just kinda <laughs> nudge him and <laughs> yeah, get, yeah, get right? back on so yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These guys, even our guys, you know, I I heard a lot during other casts about dishwashing and getting in there and, and making sure our cooks every night, our whole 
Frontline Brigade goes in the back and closes down the dish room yeah, every beautiful. night, man. That's beautiful. Every night. Oh, yeah. I was... And Koodles, it's part of it. Some of the new guys will come in and be like, I don't. It's like, oh, no, yes, yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, or if yeah, not, yeah, man, see, yeah. it doesn't work. You know, yeah, that yeah, should yeah. really be, uh, a, I, I, hopefully it is in most places, but if anybody's listening who doesn't practice that or like yeah. enforce that in their kitchen, and you're listening to this. I mean, that's what that's the end of the I'll, night. You guys I'll close look. it out together. Close yellow I'll yellow I'll lead better, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> but, you have to, man. That's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest thing in our in our business or being in anything you're doing, just being a team. If you roll a boat and, and oars are going different ways, you you're go not in a going, circle, yeah, man. Not you don't anywhere. go anywhere. But that's been the biggest thing with chemistry, and that's what we've built over there. And that's yep. as I'm coming towards the this side of my career, it's giving back to the young guys saying, Hey man. Take care of each other. Yeah. It's not. I like to. I grew up in competitiveness. Sure, sure, You're sure. Always competitive, trying to outdo each other, but sure. you still take care of each other. Absolutely. And I hope that as whatever happens in the future in our industry, if we take care of each other, I think it's that. That's where we're going to grow and, and still sure. deliver great products to the to the people that are Absolutely. out there that want to eat it. And I, I know, Mia. I've asked about you maybe considering cooking, but you know. Mm-hmm. We've, you know, he says it's it's tough, it's hard. You mean you've heard that, you know that, but like we're, he's also talked about a change. If, if there is a change where it's a much more approachable kind of lifestyle or way to to make a living, is it something you'd ever consider? I mean, if I become successful, I think that it'd be cool to like invest in some like restaurants and like. From like nowhere. Yeah, smart girl in your hands. <laughs> what What do you want to do? Uh, you got any ideas? Yeah, I do. I want to work in trauma or psychiatry and okay. um, and like medical. Th- and stuff you like you that. can you'll be perfect in a kitchen. That's what yeah. I'm saying. She can. I can save hundreds and thousands of dollars in psychiatric. <laughs> 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 just go to my daughter. And her. <laughs> you see him. You see, uh, sir, sir, on the line here. We need to pull you off. Mia's in the walk-in. Yeah. You're gonna need to go to the walk-in. Talk to her for That's five the best office in the world. Yeah. 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 Five minutes with Mia. Yeah, five minutes with me. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, you're gonna start charging. You get back in the line, right? <laughs> so who knows? That, that's it. That's that's good. So you kind of like. You know, it sounds like what he does for a living because you cook, you cook for people, you want to see them happy when a dish comes back. Yeah. It's not, she's got the same, you know, yeah. you pass that on to her, you're concerned about other people, and yeah, which is a, a good trait to have. And I don't want her to lose the, the touch of food and cooking. I think it's been a little gap that's been lost in families. That's why her learning to make pasta and sauces and things that I learned next to my, my grandparents. We we can't lose that. And it's like pass it on to her. So and when she makes pasta and your butter, I should tell her she's rolling out and cutting it and she's making a sauce. Yeah, no. It's you can't There are things that are that. being lost. And I just and learned this. Sad. I went to Chicago uh, recently and well, I, well, we I lost my, my cousin. Yes. And you know, everybody all the neighbors, all the friends, everybody was coming over and bringing food. Food. Yeah. And I I was and my mom said, you know, this might be lost on your generation, but you know, and it, I think, you know, if that were to happen here, like with, I don't think people would be coming over bringing me food no. and stuff. It's, no. it is, like, it would, and that's yeah, just, it'd be over their head. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a little thing that's been lost. And so it's valuable. Yeah. yeah. There's many of things I wish I would have learned from my grandmother, absolutely, that she used to make for me growing up that I wish I could make. You know, me too, man. And yeah. my grandma's gone now too. I have yeah, no you know. no way of going back. I've got cookbooks. Right. But like I, have some, re- I do have some, I still got that uh, cornbread recipe for sure. Yeah. I can make it too. I can make it, yeah. <laughs> there you that's, go. That's, that's, that's only for when I'm But it's when kind of home. that experience. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you, you get to teach her this and she gets to learn it with you. It's something she's not going to forget. It's just like, you know, looking at reefs. Right. You, you'll never yeah. forget that. Never forget it. I mean, I, that's how I grew up with my grandma. I mean, I was down there she taught me her raviolis her sauces her canning and it was just standing there and i but i loved it so for me it was like it was just a natural my grandfather was a baker so no breads i love bread oh, yeah i'm not a baker but i love bread so it, I, it I, runs in your family runs in the family it just my mother was <laughs> she was the cafeteria worker for all my life growing up, she went through the whole school system with us. So it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It was cool. pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, now, and now you're, you know, you yeah, got her yeah. there. It's it's nice. Not quite the cafeteria, but. Not quite the cafeteria, yeah. but it's nice to have her, you know, come in there and, and see, you know, and get, a, get to see a little bit of my side of what I do and maybe understand a little more because she's, you know, I've been absent a lot given what our what I do, but 
she kind of gets to see it now and understand it, and it's it's nice. Sure. Yeah. But um, what's really cool is whenever we do make homemade recipes at home, I use all of his, like, grandma's and, like, my grandma's old cooking ware. Cooking, yeah. Yeah, yeah cookware, yeah. Yeah, cookware. Okay. That is, yeah. there's flavor in there. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's what, <laughs> oh, that is, yes. I got to bring you a knife. You got to say, I have my grandfather's knife, and he died at 90. Yeah. And that's my my grandfather's knife sitting see, up there. That's awesome. He's still he's still going, God but he bless. gave me those recently. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, show me that. I'm, I'm. I got it. It's it's beautiful, and I have their original pasta board. You know that they made oh, pasta yeah. on for years, and you know the stories. You know the story, that, that the, it's got breathing out of it. Uh, um, that that's the one thing when they say you don't make them like they used to. If you really want to just pick up a knife that was made. 50, 60, 70 oh, years yeah. ago, and it will be rock solid. Absolutely. And that those same knives that are be, even the same company it, today will be, produce a knife. It's supposed to be maybe the same run of, or line of mm -hmm. knife, and they fall apart. Yeah. It's uh, it's really something. They don't make them like they used to. They don't make anything like they used to. No, and that's because we have like what seven going on eight billion people, or are we at six going on seven? I don't know. Or am I just getting older and I'm just being, I'm that generation going? Oh, you guys don't know. Remember when you know? Oh, yeah. Well, we're getting, we're yeah. getting, we're getting I walked, there. I walked to school in the snow backwards. <laughs> you know, it was so cold. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, man. Well, I, d I yeah. get to tell my uh, five year old, you know, explaining the the. The, you know, we had to talk on a phone like this, you know, yeah. attached to the wall. Right. Yeah. Remember, <laughs> you know? Well, that's like even that you, you talk about now, just the, the way things are reviewed now, you know, it's so it's so quick and fast. We used to have to wait for the paper to come out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You You'd know, be shaking in your boots. Yeah. Oh, yeah and yeah. now there's a tweet. Yeah. yeah. Five minutes into the I don't know service. what's fair. I think it's harder on, on the guys coming up. I mean, it's instant. They have that it's instant always, gratification. It's, but it's not always fair, even, you yeah. know, when well, you Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's very true. There's, I think there's two sides of that because it's also not fair for people who are wanting a review and you just get the person who's able to just throw up a tweet or whatever it is like yeah. instantaneously without any thought. Right. And then someone reads that. I've read reviews yeah. for like movies. Yes. And, and I'm like, oh, this movie's going to suck. Everybody hates it. And it was I go good. See it and and like, it was good. I'm like, I don't need to read reviews anymore. Right. My, my thing agree. is, so I agree about that. And the whole thing with the, with the food stuff is I'm like, if you're not in the business, I don't really care what you say because you're because you, you, yeah. you can be it, been eating McDonald's your whole life and think it's the best thing in the world and nothing against McDonald's it is engineered to taste good but it doesn't mean that it's good and we all know it's terrible for us but I'm like if you're not if you're not a cook or a chef or a dishwasher or somebody who's around it and sees it and knows what's going on you know even a server it's like I don't really care what I mean, your opinion means nothing I mean you really don't have an opinion because you don't have and you might have been your average show, and you had a bad experience. Welcome to the restaurant world, man. It happens. You know, yeah. sometimes you're going to go. And I've gone into places and had not a great time. And I'm like this. I gave everybody three chances, just like baseball. Three strikes, you're out. I'll never be back ever again. Right. But generally, I can go back, and it'll be fine. I mean, it happens. Things happen. But I'm like, yeah, people that want to throw up stuff real quick on their – I don't, and also I don't do social media either. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. I don't on any of that. If you want to get in touch with me, call me on the phone. Shoot me a text, email. That's yeah. it. I don't You're know, any school. social. Yeah, you exactly. grew up old where that app. was a thing. Yeah, when we had to remember all the telephone numbers in our brains. Oh, I remember exactly. all the numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you yeah. have anybody in, in your like age uh, that that doesn't use social media? Do you know anyone? Um, there's like kids like you meet whose parents just like won't let them have like anything because oh, they yeah. want them to kind of like. But right. they still want it. If they had their choice, they'd be able yeah, to be on it. Yeah, because we're like surrounded by it all the time. Yeah. yeah. Even in like school, like yeah. now it's all about like technology, which yeah. kind of sucks because I feel like that it also takes the whole just out of like learning whenever you have to do it like on computer and not like pen and paper. Yeah. But um, anyone that doesn't have like a phone to us, it's like weird. Yeah, yeah. And like, let's say if I like forgot my phone, I feel like. I'm like empty, like I don't know like what yeah. to like do or where my hands go. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, I it's true though. Right? Yeah, like, it's it's all of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, point. we're yeah, very dependent. And so I grew up with when the introduction of social media, right? You know, I, right, a lot right, of right. When it was invented, it. yes. And there's yes. a handful of people that I knew who just just never like yourself, yeah, who I, were just yeah. like I don't have it, I don't need it. I got a cell phone. 
10 years ago was the first time I had it when I got a cell phone. Right. You know how many of my friends laughed at me for still having, you know where I'm at, you can call me or remember the pager. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you, pay- had to pay- you can page me, man. <laughs> you know, I'll call you back. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very different you know, day. And that's yeah. something I always, I always try and tell my daughter, but sometimes when I'm trying to explain to her, I, I remember saying something about a phone once and I said, oh, she brought me my phone and I said, I don't need my phone. And she goes, she just hysterically started laughing. She's like, you don't need your phone. She thought it was hilarious. She's like, of course you need it. Yeah. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I, guess, I was like, yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's what our, when you go back to Yelp and all this stuff. It's this instant. Think about what we go, we, you kind of walk into every day. Yeah. You had a bad day at work, right? Go you ahead. show up at our place. Yeah. At, at a restaurant. At a restaurant in general, yes. Now, your behavior is just going to be, I'm not in a good mood. Yeah, it's I don't gonna, like Anything that's going it's, on, yes. which results in a bad tweet or, so, or bad whatever, tweet, right, 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 just yep, right? Shit flows downhill. Right. And I always remember that if you were to, if I was to walk in your office, if you were an office guy, and acted the same way, would security drag me out of that office? Absolutely. As a terrorist, Absol- <laughs> everything like abs- you're a horrible abs- person. Absolutely. You know, yeah, absolutely. But we get the end result of all people's days, and we still yeah. have to, you know. Yeah, yeah. You gotta like. And then they start tweeting away, it. you know, and you're like. So oh, here's well, an idea. Yeah. When you said, you know, that the, the opinion doesn't matter if you're not in the food service, and now you've gotten denied out of the. No, no. Follow me here. You got denied four times. Right. So why don't they have an app for like? People who actually need to get or like meet some qualifications to like review it. Right, that right. sounds you know I mean? fair. Right. That sounds fair. You know, and that, that would be fair. the one that you look at. Like you could be like the uh, Yelp is for like no, we don't look at you're Yelp. Any, yeah, we you're anybody. At, yes, we look at Yelp 2.0. Oh, we people right. have to be whatever you or they food, call it. or foodies or something. You know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Oh. And, and I don't know how they'd have to meet the the, the qualifications. Yeah, but how do you, but, right, exactly. But it's like at William Sonoma, if you are in the industry and you can pr- prove it, you get a ten percent discount. Right. Maybe they can have some kind of reviewing. Um, Their stuff's expensive, you know. so you need it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with the ten percent, you're still at the you know. Yeah, it's all good. But the um, you know something like that that would make it more legitimate to actually exactly. pay attention to it because if you actually want to pay attention to it, you got to read a hundred things, right? And kind of be like, what did we see a couple times in here? Because some people aren't full of it, and there's also right. those people that at the end of the day, you know, their dog ran away, and you know, yeah, their their bad. wife uh, cheated on them, and then they yeah. eat a burger that was over well done, which yeah. is a sin anyway. Yeah, but yeah, then right. they they tw- they send their Yelp review about and how all, horrible yeah. the restaurant yeah. is. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We had a restaurant. I could because it was a small place. You know, we had 120 seats, but 40 in the dining room. The rest was bar and patio. You could read the Yelp review. You knew who the person was because oh really? Because you can know by the experience what was happening. Right. You know, yeah. I remember this one time we had this couple, young couple. No matter what we sent out, didn't like it. Nothing was good. Nothing, and I'm struggling and trying, and I'm feeling bad, and they're just no. I just don't think no, no. And I'm like, finally, I stopped the service. Everything stopped. Oh shit! I had <laughs> eight. I had, with the dishwashers, ten in my brigade. This is an open kitchen. I lined them all up. There's about forty-five seats in our restaurant, and they were sitting mid middle of the restaurant. I made them each walk out and go. I'm so sorry you had a bad experience. And then the next one go. I'm so sorry. <laughs> From the wait staff to the bus boy to the dishwasher. Wow. And then. I, as they shrunk and people, it was very subtle. What? But the point was, and I walked out. I go, you know what? I apologize. I'm going to take your tab. Yeah. But I don't think we can do business anymore. Yeah. Just Absolutely. not going to work out. So anymore. what was the result yeah. of that? Did they stop coming? <laughs> they stopped coming. No, well, of course. <laughs> they, they shrunk to about two feet two, and it's like just go away. You're just not. I understand you don't like somebody. Everything you're trying to do just wasn't. It's like enough. you're just trying to be difficult. Just trying, yeah. you know, you're just trying to be there's difficult. There's a lot of those. Yeah. Know, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just, right about that. It's something that it doesn't even compute in my head Everything. just to continually. Uh, like when Everything I get, came back. Everything. It's yeah. like, man, wow. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, f- yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm very passive like with that, my yeah. food. If it comes out and it's bad, I just and I'm it, like I got I'm used to eating my well, five year old's well, food. And I'm not above I'm not <laughs> above criticism. No, no, no. Absolutely, it's constructive man. criticism Absolutely. is part of life, and especially Absolutely. what That's we do. Point. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but that was, I'm like what you're saying. Like is I've I was actually eating at a place, uh, Reds Reds Porch, right? Yeah. And I got a, I got a ordered hamburger or whatever. I was just sitting at the bar, you know, talking to the girl's bartender, or whatever. Had a beer, watching the game was on. 
And they actually brought me their own food. And I look at it, and I was like, oh, I don't think I ordered that. And then I was like, well, you know, and, before, and I, you know, I was just going to be like, whatever. I was going to eat it. <laughs> and, and then the, this guy was like, sir, sir, sir. Ah, I brought you the wrong stuff. And I was like, well, I was like, oh, I was like, okay, yeah. yeah, sure, man, no problem. You know, like, no, no big yeah. I was like, no, Just, I mean, it was like, well, I didn't really order that, but I mean, I'm hungry. Here it is. Like, sure. all right, you know, sure. I, I'm going to dive in. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, not a big deal, you know? Yeah, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy it. Um, I like, um, that's, uh, I guess I didn't mention that. The burger, because it's simple, but, you know, it is what it is, and you can get something, you know, beer. Like, I love beers on taps, and there's usually... Because I don't go upstairs. I usually just go downstairs so I can just sit right there and chill. And it's usually not that many people. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. But so well, is it a Monday or Tuesday? Probably. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's the industry. <laughs> that's right our, here. Yeah, he doesn't even best, know. That's <laughs> our best <laughs> so it's like, um, it's so, like you, so, you know, and I go Monday's there and just kind of, yeah, and just kind of yeah. chill because yeah. selfishly enough, sometimes when I go places, I don't. I might not want to talk to anybody except for who I'm engaging with, whether it be the server well, yeah. or the bartender or whatever. I don't want these people coming. Well, not that I don't want to, but I mean, if somebody comes here and starts yakking in my ear while I'm eating, I kind of might say something not like, you know, I might, I might say something to them. I mean, I will say oh. something to them, but normally it's just like, you yeah. know, you want to be left alone, which I know that's selfish me going out in public. No, but we but take a lot of input. During the week, man, you know, we take a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You like gotta giving, giving, giving. We gotta yeah, like, like detox yourself. Yeah, that's what man. I'm saying. Gotta, it's like being, it's up. like being the punching bag all week long, and now you're on, now you're on your own free time. Sure, you want to do it how you want to do it. Yeah, you know? oh sure. Yeah, going out to eat, I'm sure it's like all, all over the place with a chef. You're either totally acceptable if something comes out wrong, or like you're look, picking no, it I, apart. This should be different. Yeah. This should I'm be always, different. I'm super understanding, but just because I've been in the business for so long, I do start picking everything it, well, apart. Well, if you see but, something uh, that's blatantly right, right, wrong. Right, 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 right. But I'm not going to rain on these people pray. They're trying They're trying to come, they're they're busting their tail just like everybody else, and they're yep. trying to do the best they can. I'm I not think, just going to, I'm not going to be, I would never be mean or disrespect anybody, yeah. I, I, ever, ever. No. Now, if well, I have, that's, even that's if I have. That's also a good quality to have. No. You know what I'm saying? Not like this. People, right? No. <laughs> no. What's what I'm saying? Those other people. It felt the, so good, though. I got to those, <laughs> well, those, other, those other people don't get it. They've never been on the other side. And yes. a lot of those people feel like they think that they're better. It's like, how? You can't cook for yourself and you think you're better? It's like, right. are you kidding me? Well, and that's <laughs> like know? with this, I hope this kind of reaches an audience where, um, of course, foodies can listen to, you know, Chef sure. Paul or Matt or. Uh, Mia here and and enjoy the food they're eating. Of right. course, you have to be a member in your right. this situation. But like, you listen to whoever, and then when you go there, you might know more about them oh, as a yeah. chef and what they go through. Um, it, you know, it it might open people's eyes a little bit, yeah. and that's the whole so. point. I hope so. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. absolutely. We absolutely. have a, every person that works in this business is you're already guaranteed into heaven. Because you're taking care of people, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm you're, not a you're, religious you're, man, but you're going to heaven. If you're, that's I, what you do for a living, you're going. To, you. Well, I, I am slightly. I am, but at the same time, I do agree because the number one rule that we all took, the oath that we took as being chefs, is you you feed people fresh, wholesome, nutritious cuisine, and that's what you give them. You wouldn't. One thing I've always gone by is I wouldn't give you anything I wouldn't give my right. mother or eat myself. Exactly. And that's it. You know, and that's it. And it can be fancy on a plate. Doesn't have to be. It could be a simple hamburger. But, sure. You know, as long as it's. But even with a simple hamburger, real quick, we'll, we'll wrap this up soon here. The but when you're a chef, and I know we have people who are listening who aren't in the industry, right? But it's also even if it's just a simple burger, mm -hmm. it needs to be cooked properly because you hold the responsibility of Absolutely. actually. You want to make mm -hmm. people happy, right? Absolutely. We, we all focus on Absolutely. the pleasure aspect. Yes. Right? But like yes. nobody's. We, I mean, we haven't really touched base on like how I mean, you guys are almost like doctors in there. You you are making sure the meat is in temperature. You know, you're making uh, right. what the walk-in has to be a certain. It's right. a little more like chemistry, really, right. or okay. al like alchemy based. Really, that's really that's but what if it's something's like being not in the kitchen. Right, right. Are you gonna make you it? Guys, right? You guys are the ones to know. raise the flag and like yep. stop yeah. it from from continuing. Absolutely, well, it's a big responsibility. It is. I when me was in, I think third or fourth grade, maybe third. Yeah. They had a career day, and Dad came in. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was 52 steps to make a peanut butter sandwich. This is driving to the store, shopping each step along the way for that simple peanut butter sandwich to go on a plate. So think about that. And that, the steps and that starts it with, oh, the, wow. with, with the, the driving to the store. Now let's actually go. backed it up to the peanut farmer. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, wow. It took it all the way oh, wow. back. The guy has to farm it. It has to be processed. It has to be jarred. It has yeah. to be delivered. It has yeah. to be yeah. 
You have to pick it up. You have to take it home. You have to unload it. You have to put it. I mean, there's a and lot of also, steps, man. Wow. I really want to get some vendors on here, like some farms, you know, that people work with. And we got some guys who are making mead, and they're going to come on with. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, with be, like yeah. the the people they're sourcing the honey from, kind of like talk about the relationship and stuff. Because yes, it goes way beyond just like when the order. I mean, right? Most people eat and aren't thinking about the, when the order came no. in. No, you had a simple burger. Well, you know, just the baker that made the bun yep. and where the flour and where this. It's just the so people many that grew the tomatoes, the people that grew the lettuce, it's not, the onions. We just where take the it for cheese granted, was made. You know. Yeah, I don't know computer stuff, so I take that for granted. I just want it to work. When well, that's it comes yeah. up say I'm me. that's no, I'm so. I'm you know we're all kind of in the same. I'm like yeah, I have a phone and it's probably smarter than me. You know, I don't know how to use it that well and how to call people and that's it. You know, well, I'm, I'm sadly a geek with technology and well, that's computers. Good. I'm kind of that's a great. I'm still kind of a I like you, but I try to keep you you know at yeah. arms bay. You well, know? look, I couldn't do this podcast <laughs> if I couldn't navigate a while. Around I, I mean, computer that's that's home, that's man. fair, man. That's fair, and that's the evolution. That's where food service is going, you know, cutting the labor back, how you're going to, you know, the new machinery they're bringing in, the new, how technology, I well, mean, you've, the ovens you've heard, and the thing. You listen to David Chang? Yeah, yeah. He's talked about a lot of restaurants are like actually launching where part of their restaurant is made for, like, Grubhub or right, whatever. Right, right. That's it. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, a very, it's changing quite a bit. It is. Think about you walked in years ago to a Starbucks or any of these places. Now you can walk in, and because you can order online. Oh, yeah, order your phone. Yeah. yeah. You feel like you're waiting behind somebody that's not there yet, and I'm not quite – maybe I'm, I'm antiquated because I'm getting older. It's like I walked in. I'm a customer. We're interface, But you can actually be waiting because they have tickets this, this long. For people that have for ordered online. For people on that there. are yeah. ordered online mm-hmm. and want to rush in and grab. So, so I'm trying to wrap my head around all that sometimes. Right. It's funny right. you say that because every single morning, every morning like clockwork, I go get a tall – coffee at yeah. a Starbucks. But here's the funny part. No, I mean, every morning, and it's always the same people, and they don't recognize me or the drink I want, or really? they just... They don't really? know what you want. But they're so preoccupied with... And then these people just walk in and grab these drinks, and right. they, they grab the, and they're not used to somebody going up. And I ordered the simplest, a tall black yeah, coffee. Just, yeah, that's what I would order. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's um, every day, and I've always said, I, I kind of like joke about it. I'm like, I go every day, and there's some people that know me, but they're all like preoccupied with like you know yeah. doing this little. And I watch all these people come in and grab their drinks off, and I'm like, I'm just waiting here for my tall coffee. Yeah, and, right. It, our Starbucks were actually very fortunate. Yeah, we've been there. I think they've been there 16, 17. Is years. that the one off seventy one by the H E B? Yeah, yeah. And they know us, and a lot of the people have been there a long time. It's and, a, and it's a phenomena. I don't know why they don't know me. I'm like people. That's and one? I hope they're listening because I put my cards up here. No, um, it's the one right off here. Oh, because these you walk in like, hey, Paul, where's Mia? She didn't she got coming today, or she's not. And yeah, you know, see, that's what I'm looking for. And that's been there. I mean, we've been going for years, and I've watched, I've watched the customer base change more than the employees change. And, you know, I was fortunate enough when I was in R&D to work with Starbucks when they were just on the oh, wow. brink of putting food or wanting to put food in, into the, you know, into their stores. And the thing was it couldn't interrupt the service of the coffee. It couldn't take away from the smell of the coffee. It had to be streamlined that you wow, could just... the thought of that. That's that's years... We're talking 2000, maybe... To interrupt the smell of a coffee. No, that it had to stay. That was their main thing. And the Turbo Chef... That's sort of sad for food, the food. <laughs> yeah, I mean, their thing was... Main focus was coffee. Now now they've expanded to more of the cafe thing, but... Yeah. And the Turbo Chef was about this big that they're using now that you see about this big. That, you know, you program in how, you know, it's, it's heat, it's steam, it's dry, and now it cooks. It does, and, you know, it's a it's microwave on steroids, right. you know. Yeah, I can't, I can't attest to the food. I don't know what you did there, but you you le- you left too early. No, that- I, I was in a, I, our, some of the concepts kind of played through to other people, but we were just way in the, on the base of just, I had met their R&D chef at a conference. And I said, we're doing this, you're doing that. Next thing you know, we're in Seattle at Starbucks playing with this right. thing. It was it was pretty it was a pretty cool thing, man. I've had a but really good run with some things. To get all the nostalgic when they go in and they know you, I mean, part of me going in for getting a coffee right. is that I want to say hi. And they right. I want them just to pour it because I get the same thing every day. Right. I mean, occasionally I'll get a bag of coffee too. Right. 
Dunkin' That's Donuts, it. right? You're our favorite. Oh, yeah. You going to Northeast to Dunkin' Donuts? They we got one here down Slaughter. If you yeah. guys are interested, and she is one of it. And I'll go. I just want a regular. They know it's great. Yeah, yeah. Here yeah. you have to say what's They're, regular. Yeah, they're you, they're like, cream cream you want regular sugar? coffee? It was like, no. well, we got regular decaf up and, north, cream and sugar. Right. Just give me your large regular, man. And uh, hey, it's it's a whole different. Sure. And I I sure. kind of I trust you know people in a way where like sure. me as generation I'm like. I'm sure they'll figure it out, yeah. right? They'll right. figure out how yeah. to have that kind of connection. But there's, you know, there's us. We we sometimes I feel like we're like walking around like, right. what happened? Like why why can't you guys say hi to me while I get right. my coffee? How much is that worth? That's like when you take it to what we do in the club. It's worth so much. What makes you your say morning? Hello, and you shake your hand. How you doing? How's everything? Yeah. You got to know your customer, and I think that's that little detachment. Where that, that's kind of. But I I a, think like I said, I trust like her. Gen- I think we're in like um like a a stepping stone like we're in between where people are going to be like oh yeah we're all staring at our phones and nobody's really talking to right. each other I and then like we'll that. we'll kind of like that but it's i think this was what happening yeah and we're kind of people are gonna there's we're smarter than that right of course people are. are gonna go oh shit right. sorry i've been staring at my phone for 10 years so right. how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, just woke, I just woke up obey like all the kids in my school they they just don't know how to have like a conversation. Yeah, like that's strange. Like you can you can talk to them on social media if they're standing next. Yeah, to you. like they can text really really well. Of course, but like if you like talk to them, they'll be like, oh yeah, okay, and then they'll go back to like their phones, and you're like, yeah. that's weird. Dude, come yeah. on. So I think that. That's part that of that's people will get over that the personal the and everything stays though. out that's there, right? The human experience, yeah, like man. you yeah. have to interact yeah, with each it. other. That's part of us yeah. being beings. But, you know? but what I see, and I'm I'm trying to be very optimistic about it, is I, these kids. They're humans, so they're doing this, and they're all and they're going to come to a, like a fork in the road where they're going to be like, well, it's just going to lose its zest. It's not a human, you know. You, right. This this is nothing, you know. It's it's. Fossil, but fuel. not everybody she, sees it like it, that, though. You know, you're right, but yeah. I'm saying some of those people don't see it like that. That's right. that is their everything, yeah. or their phone is well, their everything. Matrix is coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> plug right in. Well, which, uh, yeah, hey, which pill are you gonna take, man? Because I'm gonna take them both and yeah, see what happens. Let's <laughs> 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 get a little cocktail. You know, that's a chef. I mean, I'm gonna take them both and see what happens. See what happens. See what happens. Put an egg on top. Anything with an egg on top makes it all else. She, I mean, I watched her in the Bahamas, man. She put her phone down. Yeah. And she was like, I love life. wow, man, no phone. She stopped coming back. I don't want Starbucks. She goes for a while. I don't want, she started eating more natural. It was interesting when you take them off the grid for a second. Just yeah. be yeah. like, you know. Enjoy life. Let me let yeah. the natural Enjoy girls life. come out, man. I don't need to straighten <laughs> anything. It's all good. Sure. We're just going to yeah. chill. Honestly, like when I went down, like being off my phone, it, it's such a good like detox. Yeah. From like here. And whenever like, you come back, I, I mean, I wasn't, really, I'm still not really into my phone ev- anymore since I got back, which I good. really yeah. appreciate. Like, I like look at it and I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing on this? I'm like, I don't know what to do. That's great. No, yeah. that's good. Oh, good for you. Yeah. yeah. I grew up in a generation where Fowler said, don't write anything down you can't say. You just don't write anything. <laughs> These kids, it all stays out there forever. Yeah. That's, I mean, when yeah, we look at employees, yeah. potential employees. You look at their Facebook? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They do a big, huge <laughs> you're background You're going background check. checks. You're going, oh, check. Yeah. oh, yeah. A huge background Everything check. Everything stays wow. with you forever. Oh, yeah. Forever. Oh, yeah. Ever. Wow. And yeah, that's man. the thing. Imagine now you can just go, oh, I just found him. Let me just check. Oh, here's his Facebook. Yeah. Look, at, look what they're doing, you wow. know. This they're doing something not too. I don't know about that. You it's know? not. It's sure. not saying it's always bad, but it's right, like, right, 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 right. It's, it's out there. It's always going to be out there. You know, it's not always bad because I know I follow a lot of the chefs in Austin, yeah. uh, specifically for this podcast, and also because everybody's awesome. And that's why we're yeah. doing the podcast. But sometimes you might get on there and just be like, "Wow, this guy's rocking and rolling in the Absolutely. kitchen." So yeah, it can come in handy. But if you get on there and you're, you know, in a political battle and yeah. Tweeting every right, thirty yeah. seconds. No, That's no, exactly. gonna leave yeah, a bad taste no. in anybody's mouth. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think man. this this cast has been wonderful for Austin and we gotta bring the chefs together more. That's our problem, man. Yeah. We have that competitive we used spirit. To be- as much as we like to say we want to be together, still always that little bit of a wall. Sometimes you gotta break down. Do I trust you as much as you trust me? Coming yeah. in? I feel like we right? should do yeah. like so some of the one of the cool things you used to do back home was is like so we would have these these festivals downtowns and there'd be bands 
and the play, and there would be people bringing their art and jewelry and paintings and so forth. Okay. And there would also be a barbecue competition at the same time while all this is going on. Sure. And everybody gets to hang out. We're all yeah. hanging out. Like, yeah. And then they have people come through, celebrity guests, chef, other people of five, five guests that come through and mm-hmm. check everything out. And you have people get to sell their merchandise. You get to listen to good music. Bands get to play. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But it was, like you're saying, it's everybody coming together. Like, we're all, at the end of the day, we're all hanging out. Like, even the chefs that were hanging out, they come over there, like, yeah. they see me and my buddies, and they're like, oh, dude, you're not. You're not. I was like, no, dude. I'm playing, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not cooking, man. I'm not cooking. I'm playing, bro. And they're like, oh, yeah, man. We'll, we'll come over here and check when what we got, man. Check it out, right? When your guest was saying he got, I can't remember his name. It may, have, may have been Christian. Could have been Christian. He. They get together every, you know, once a month or something. Oh, that year. was uh, Dave, Davis Turner from Dave's Huckleberry. Turner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, no, that that's great. And and I think on a much bigger scale we do have certain things like the potlucks like the yeah. Aaron Franklin re- does or yeah. the hot luck hot well, I don't know I can't even think of what it's called but they just did like a sauce yeah yeah fest this last weekend uh no this week yesterday oh cool um but there's there's little things that happen but then again as much as we want to bring it together Austin is huge yeah it's big and I love Austin but because we, we can go start every, somewhere though you can, you can start right. somewhere but it's like just to even bring everybody together like that is uh it's yeah. turning into a kind of a big hurdle you yeah. know what i mean cuz like you guys might not have known about that yesterday no, and i, I don't and like restaurant weeks going on and stuff like that i don't know I, that's well you know we there's can't. things that happen but there's just you know right. it's, it's becoming to be a hurdle it's right. a private time i'm talking to would be cool yeah. like up in up in new york or working in connecticut you had the crews that all met like all the exec chefs, all of us guys, you know, you'd meet after work, and it's it's the you know two a.m. to six a.m. kind of fun that you would yeah. sit uh, and yeah. round table, and everybody would bring stuff in, and we'd eat and just go over our nights yeah. and stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah. But, sure. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Those are those are long past days. Well, you know? maybe not though. You know, yeah. And that's even what I'm if saying. we maybe can not. put this content out there where yeah. somebody can listen and just feel that that kind of connection, right. Rather than. Um, actually physically going because we're in a different time yeah, yeah man. Like yeah, we've been yeah. saying with you know you know me as generation and the the phones and everything but we are in that you know we're all yeah writing, we are, we're writing in the technology that. you're right we're in this time so yeah i mean but we, we, we've been going here for two hours wow nice <laughs> nice nice yeah <laughs> it's it great could, it could be episode a and b perfect it could yeah. be episode a just I, i'm just Thank you. Yeah, it's been absolutely. Great. I've enjoyed. Oh, I've enjoyed, enjoyed all it the thoroughly. podcasts. Yeah. How you cool. woke Thank up, you so much, running man. out the door in the morning to get this thing going. Oh. That's what I. I yeah. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's and you. I always say you guys are welcome back, but you got thirty years of experience. We haven't even scratched the surface of no. kind of the yeah. wisdom that we can get out of you. And I really want we, to start yeah. focusing on, um, you know, like bands you know because there's what you're doing is really common in the industry yeah uh, casino oh, yeah El, absolutely yeah casino el camino downtown mm-hmm. those guys oh all they do have a, uh yeah actually i, I didn't the mention burger. they do got a killer burger yeah they do got a killer burger they right. do got a killer burger but you know just the kind of like musician and you know what i'd really like to see um you know they provide um what is it? Insurance for musicians. Through yes, them. yes, yes. And how many yes, cooks yes, do we yes. have floating around? Yes, throughout the absolutely, town absolutely. That? That's yeah. a good Wouldn't point. It be cool. That's a just, good point. And I know it's individual companies to provide it, but sure. why not have some kind of alliance for uh, cooks and chefs? Yeah, great, that'd be great. That would be. Yeah. Like if your company's not going to offer it, you can also get it here because you know it's it's a food town, right? Yeah. You know? So hard. Now. Yeah. I, when I and hear it's the a, story, it's a music and a food town. That's why I moved here. That's right. why I moved personally. That's why I moved here because yeah. it was like, oh well, I'm I'm, I'm a musician. I, yeah. The food is chef, definitely continuing, do, but know? the the music is kind of dissipating a little, yeah. and it's just I know, I know. But well, you well, get you get the band, so get out there more. Yeah. Yeah, man. Absolutely yeah, true. I think with the rest, we're fortunate in our, I think, the club industry. We have, it's as close to normal as you can get as far as we don't work Thanksgiving. We're off on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Um, yeah. We have uh, great 401k, great insurance. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, we do. It's like, we, I mean, we do. Our company treats us so well. They do. Most of the club, and there's a lot of clubs are out there that are like the same way. It's a whole, it's not the rock star glamour of, no, no, no. You know, downtown. Right, 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 right. You know, right, right, I have, right. Uh, my boss has 
you know, French chef 20 years. He told me, if these guys who get in with country clubs and they're the executive chefs there, they know what they're doing. Because yeah. you have to be liked and then you'll really get taken care of. Exactly. And it's like that with a num- number of places, uh, not just country clubs. Yeah. But like, and, and yeah, it doesn't have the appeal of, you know, you're opening another location on 6th Street or whatever right. it is. But right. like, there's the quality of life there. Yeah, oh, it, absolutely. It, it is. And even, you know, for me, I, I'm at the point in my career, I'm just happy to be. Yeah. yeah. I, I love my team so much. I don't. I don't look at whose titles what. Well. I just enjoy going in and doing what I do. Yeah. It doesn't, you know, I, it's, it's fun. It, yeah. It's got to be fun, and that's the evolution to me. If you can't have fun anymore, man, why bother? Yeah. Right. You know, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Oh, well, you guys, thank you all for coming out here. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you for having thank us. You. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Chef Paul, Matt. Yeah. You guys can go get a membership to Spanish Oaks and go go <laughs> <Yeah>. say hi. <laughs> but good luck with that. You yeah, right. To, yeah. to One cash day. in some. Uh, One day. Yeah. But yes, they, they're there. They're doing some incredible things. Yeah. Um, I definitely, everybody's welcome to come back on. And believe me, I have a tendency to start twisting people's arms to get back in here. Yeah. So, but we'll hear from you guys soon, hopefully. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.